Thank you, Brother Hunter. God bless you. Good morning, friends. It's a privilege to be back in the tabernacle on this fine Easter morning, worshiping the great uh, resurrection of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to say that I was certainly, of all the messages that I ever heard our pastor preach, his best one was this morning. I went home and told my wife, I said, honey, this is one morning you missed it when I getting up early. <laughs> That's the best that I heard on the resurrection in all my life. I never heard anything any better on the resurrection Amen. our pastor gave us this morning. Such an astounding message. And uh, everything right to its point. That goes to show that when the anointing gets a hold of a man, what, what happens? <laughs> that does something then. And uh, so we're happy that that God has given us this wonderful pastor. Amen. And now, I want to thank each and every one of you. We've been here now for quite a little while, at different times, uh, back and forth, but I'm leaving for the fields now, as you know. This week I'm leaving for the Cree Indians up in British Columbia. And then over in th- from there to Fort St. John, and then uh, this summer, the Lord willing to be in uh, all on the west coast, up in the east, and and out on the west coast, and up into Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, and through there. And then perhaps from there, I'm sending out some feelers for Africa and the rest of the world for the oncoming winter. So it'll probably be some time before I get to be back here at Tabernacle again. At least it'll be up in August or sometime this fall before I can get back again. And I want to thank you all for your fine cooperation for all that you've done and we're sorry we never have room for the people here on these mornings. We um, are in a building project now as you know to build a bigger church for these services. And uh, so that'll probably go into effect right away now. They'll start building on the church. Now, we uh, also want to thank each and every one of you for your for gifts, birthday cards, Easter cards, gifts that you've given Billy and different far of and once for me, Brother Woods and many of them. I appreciate them all. And each one comes and says. You don't know what a strain it is. Somebody to come and say, now we want to see Brother Bram, we want to see your father, so forth, and said, the sheet's filled up. Now, you don't know what an embarrassing condition it puts you in when you, you, you just get to so many and that's all you can do. I, I wished it was so I just had a long time with each one, could sit down and I hope to do that sometime, but it can't be on this earth because... There's people comes in here from all over the world, see, from around the world. This week, been people from several nations in here and been interviewed and prayed for this week uh, from nations around the world. And uh, if it's just our little local congregation here in Jeffersonville, I could gladly take two or three hours in each one and weed it right down and have them out. But see, while there are just maybe, say, five calls from, or maybe two calls from right in our local community, there's a hundred or two from around the world at the same time these two are coming in. So there's been literally thousands that I couldn't even touch. No way. People, and the calls to come here and go there from around the world, just airplane tickets sent in, everything else, come pray for the sick. But you can't do it. So the people are disappointed. I would be too. But I just like on this Easter morning to make it my confession to say that uh, I don't know what to do about it. There's just too many, you know, uh, to to get to. Thousands and thousands of people from around the world. I take my seventh trip around, as you know, and I have in personal contact with better than 10 million people from around the world. So you can imagine how, how, what a strain that is on you. And... Many times we hit little strains, and I know you do too, and little disappointments. 
But the thing that I have, the disappointments I have, when sick mothers on the phone saying, Oh God, well, wait just a minute, Brother Brown. Lord Jesus, I, uh, I pray that you'll send him. And, and just hung up the phone from another one and here and here and here and all around the world. You know how it is. Amen. And that... That's not easy when somebody on the end of the phone with a sick baby or a sick husband or a dying wife a praying for you to come. Now you can imagine, no wonder I'm a neurotic. <laughs> it's, a, it's enough to make one. But I have done this one thing. Instead of getting a complex, I've tried to hold steady by keeping my eyes on Calvary and moving on just as He would have me to do. And many of my mistakes, I pray that God will forgive me of uh, things that maybe I should have went one place and didn't go. I'm just human and can subject to mistakes. There's a little cute little thing was said here in the backyard this morning when I was going out from the sunrise service. I got a precious old friend. He's probably here somewhere. He's from Chicago. His name's Stuart. He's about Ed Stewart. I guess he's in his middle 70s or better. And he met me out there and he saves his tithing money in dimes. And he gave me a whole package of dimes, about like that. And, oh, I don't know, I, of course, they go to foreign mission work. And his good friend and mine, Brother Skaggs, Leonard Skaggs from Lowell, Indiana, was standing there. And I never knew before, he was a mason. He had a mason button on him. And we were talking about the Masonic Order. And so... The old brother, Stuart, said to me, he said, I like you, Brother Branham, and I'd like to talk to you. Excuse this expression. But he said, you're harder to get to than a Turkish harem. <laughs> Someone said to me not long ago, I'm glad the Lord's not that hard to get to. <laughs> well, I don't mean to be that way. I love people, but I just imagine I went home and I told my wife if we sat at the table and laughed, how hard it would be to get to a Turkish harem. <laughs> so uh, I hope it isn't quite that difficult, Brother Stewart, if you're still in here. But I sure did think that was a little sense of humor that kind of made us all have a chuckle. So I wish I could see everyone. And I love everyone, that is true. Whether they're a friend or foe, it's just the same. And um, now I certainly covet your prayers for me. In this oncoming meeting, I'm going among Indians. And, um, you know, you, when you're in Rome, you have to be a Roman. And when you're with Indians, you have to live as Indians. My missionary friend, who is a hunting partner of mine, where I was up on the highway, Alaskan Highway, a very fine young fellow and his wife have a nice home and I arms eat in there and a hole around behind his ears and things and I wondered what was the matter with him he'd have an eczema and some fleas and bed bugs or he'd had to live how he'd had to live out there and so you have to live right with the people to win them to Christ they're Christ heritage they are people who he died for and somebody must go to them Amen. and the chief was over at one of my recent northern meetings and the Holy Spirit in the meeting or out on a campground on the ground tourist court I believe it was called his name and who he was and what he had did and Oh my, that just settled it with him. He knew that human beings couldn't do that. That has to come from Almighty. So that chief had just fired that all up and down that coast there. And we're going to take the meetings in a little sailboat, go into the places where we get through for them and on out and up the coast and to the others, to the Cree Indians and neglected. Many of the brethren who have big services cannot go for that. Now, the Indians, there won't be one penny of money. As you know, I never take an offering in my meetings. I don't take money. But the church here is, is sponsoring that meeting to the Indians. Some of you are tithing money and things. So go to pay to bring this message of salvation and deliverance to those poor, illiterate Indians. After all, they are the Americans, you know. We're the foreigners. You see, we come in and tuck it from them. And uh, we won't... I can't give them back their nation, but I can give them the hopes in Christ that will put us together as a brotherhood someday in a land where there is no time Amen. and taking land one from another. It'll be a land room for all. I'll be 
thankful when that time comes if all my loved ones are saved and ready at that time. Now, I have many friends I'm seeing sitting around here as I'm speaking. I believe I'm noticing Sister, um, I can't think of her name, <laughs> used to be Lee. Is that right? Aren't you, Mrs. Lee? Your daughter here? The daughters, the ones that was healed, that's very fine. The ones in the Good Shepherd's Home, or not, what is that called? Sister of some Catholic institute. Lady of Peace, that's what. Uh, I get all them Catholic names mixed up. And so, um, over there, and she was had a mental nervous break. And the dear Lord Jesus, while we were uh, sitting on the foot of the bed, and her precious mother and father standing close, and the Lord Jesus pronounced it done, finished. Amen. 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 It's all over. Amen. And uh, of course, we know Sister uh, is very grateful this morning. And I'm looking out over there and seeing people who were dying recently with cancer, crawling in their own wheelchairs, crutches. Here they are, arm and well this morning. Amen. That's world over. Not by me, by Him, Amen. Amen. our Lord, who is risen from the dead, is alive forevermore. May our Lord ever be praised and blessed is my sincere prayer. Will you pray for me? All of you, pray for me. Now, I, I depend on that. And when I get out there, see here at home, it's not too bad around here. But when you get there where you really hit the battlefront, this is training. I was hearing yesterday when a church got a, a new station wagon for me and I to travel and my other's uh, about worn out and so um, I, I turned the radio on and listened to newscasts and then they was coming down last night from where Joseph and I went to pray and then we coming down from Greens Mill they, I turned the radio on as a newscast and it's following this monitor was following a young fella in his training. And how he's standing there with his pockets full of sand and everything, where he had to hold his head so low that live machine gun fire was going right above his head while he crawled through bob wires and things, taking a rigid training. Well, that's what we're doing here. But now it's a lot different on the battlefront. See, that machine gun is time trained right at a certain level, but on the battlefront, it could come up or down. See? So, so that's a little different. There he's in the So we had to. Well, this is training here, but out there you're on the battlefront. So we're going to face the enemy now. So uh, we used to fight, sing a little song here, The Fight Is On. Anybody still remember that song? Yeah. The fight is on, old Christian soldiers, and face to face in stern array. Where the armor's gleaming and color streaming, the right and wrong's engaged today. Yeah. That's right, see. The fight is on, but be not weary, be strong, and in his might hold fast. If God be for us, His banner over us, we'll sing the victor's song at last. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there was many things that I had to say this morning, but I kind of cut it short where I had people standing and packed in and they got little speakers for the outside and a little broadcast, I think, at each car and the, the broadcasting system let us go out so many yards in the tabernacle with it. And so we uh, were trying to Appreciate everybody's visit with us this morning. Now, before any farther, um, let's say that to, now immediately after this, I think is baptismal yeah. service. The first is the prayer line. We're going to pray for the sick this morning. I think God coming on the scene is a proof of what we're talking about is resurrection. Is he alive or isn't he alive? Is this just a fiction story or is it the truth? If he's alive, he made a promise. I'll be with you always even to the end of the world now if he if he comes in amongst us here and proves that he's here then there's no more guess about it see? and remember all the religions in the world they have their holy days and holidays and so forth but there's none of them that can prove that their founder at death took him and that was all of it but ours Christian religion. Our founder died and rose again. In Mexico recently when I was interviewed by uh, uh, the press of uh, the resurrection of a little baby that had died that morning at 9 o'clock and at 10.30 that night, 10.30 or 11 o'clock, was raised up from the dead right there in her mother's arms at the platform before tens of thousands of people. 30,000 come to Christ that night. So then you can imagine what was there. 
And the little fellow, I saw the vision out in front of me and it told about what his little name was and everything. And the mother was way back there, couldn't get a prayer card, couldn't get in, but she didn't have to get up to the line. So when she brought the little baby, raining, pouring down, we think of us standing, think of them. They'd be there at 9 o'clock at morning for services to begin 9 that night, standing in the hot sun, leaning against one another for shade. Standing, not sitting, standing. And that's the way they do it. Africa and different places in India where half a million gathers out at a time. Now, this little woman couldn't even get a prayer card. Over about 300 ushers to hold her back and she couldn't get in the prayer line. And standing there praying for that little baby, a little Catholic woman. And the Holy Spirit called and said, tell her to bring it here. And the little baby under a wet quilt, been standing there since that morning, the doctor pronounced it dead. Now we got the doctor's statement of it. That pronounced it dead that morning at 9 o'clock. And then this was that night, nearly midnight. And I just according to what the vision said, I went and laid hands on the little baby. There it was alive. The doctor gave testimony. I was interviewed by the press. And so being nothing against anybody's belief, as long as it's with the Bible, all right. But the man that was interviewing me was Catholic. And they said to me, do you believe our saints can do that? I said, if they're living. Of course, I know the Catholic Church believes you have to be dead to be a saint. So then I said, uh, if they are living, yes. And uh, he said, oh, you can't be a saint until you're dead. I said, was Paul a saint before he died? Or after he died? Who was he writing to the dead people when he said to the saints that are at Ephesus, the saints that are at Ephesus? He wasn't writing to dead people, you know. So then he said, now you're trying to judge your case by a Bible. We are the church. I said, all right, sir. Okay. And uh, he said, we are the church. I said, now let's see the church do it. <laughs> and um, so it's only Christ can do that, you know. He said, what's your opinion of the Catholic Church? I said, I wish you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> and he said, uh, well, I'd like to hear it. And I said, the highest form of spiritualism that there is. And he said, spiritualism? I said, yes, sir. He said, how do you figure that? I said, anything that intercedes with the dead. Communion of saints. And he said, well, you prayed to Christ and he died. I said, but he rose again. So that's the good thing that we know he rose again. Aren't we thankful? Let's bow our heads and thank him because he did raise from the grave for our justification. Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning for Jesus. And today in commemoration of his great resurrection on that Yule morning when he rose from the dead triumph over death, hell, and the grave. When he was on earth, he showed he had triumphed over sickness, diseases, and, and all kinds of devils and powers. Then death lay before him, the great and last enemy. And on Easter morning, he proved he was God. He rose from even the last enemy. Could not hold him. The grave gave him up. Hell had to give him forth. Heaven received him. Oh God, may our hearts receive him today in the power of the Holy Spirit. That we might be his executives, his, his examples of his servants here on earth as we sojourn. Granted, bless all the cheer. God, these precious people who are standing, some of them have been jammed in here since daylight. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will pour out the exceedingly abundantly above all that we could do or think upon them today and give them the deep desires of their heart. Whatever one come for this morning, may they go back satisfied. You said you'll not turn any away, but you will fill him with good things and send him away rejoicing. Grant it, Lord. May your omnipotence May your Holy Spirit in the power of the resurrection so deal with each of us that our hopes will be built on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. Grant it, Father. Bless the words now that we read. We thank you for that noble message this morning as we come early to the church and to see you take our brother and such a change in him in a few moments and deliver a message to this dying generation of people that we are now part of. How we thank you for that, Lord. Oh, God, our hearts quiver with joy as we think of those things. Now, keep him anointed, Lord, down through the days that is ahead of him, Lord. 
And bless this little church and help me, Lord, as I go to bring the message to other people. And may we together, like one person, one family, stick together and pray together and live together in holy unity of the Holy Spirit until Jesus receives us into the kingdom. For we ask it in His name and for His glory. Amen. You sure can, brother. As a token of our appreciation and by the the work of a young man in our midst, we present this picture to you, Brother Brown, with the full expression of our love and appreciation. Thank you, Brother the Neville young and man was Jerry Steffi that painted that picture. Brother Jerry Steffi painted that picture. God bless that boy. Hallelujah. That's very fine, Jerry, if you're here this morning. Hallelujah. It's too bad. I wish I had the means to let that boy go to school for an artist. Yeah. I believe God is in art. And she, God is in music. God is in art. God is in this. And it's too bad to see a talent like that wouldn't be uh, uh, developed. The more he does, the more developing it'll be. And I, I pray that God will bless you, Jerry. And thank you, Brother Neville, and to this church for this fine uh, picture and for the verse that goes under it. I'll read it a little later. <laughs> you want me to read it? All right, sir. Brother Neville will read the verse. <laughs> Amen. I, did, I had an idea of what <laughs> He's not a man of stature, tall nor lofty in his way. He sounds himself no trumpet as he goes from day to day has no desire for wealth nor fame, but none his place could fill. He's just the way we want him, our own dear brother Bill. He teaches us with faithfulness the undiluted word. No fancy ways, no love for praise, just following the Lord. His speech is soft and gentle. He raises not his voice except to cry against the wrong. And then he has no choice. Never got a lot of learning from colleges and schools, but he knows what is important and he's sure nobody's food. For the knowledge he is given is eternal from above. He has no creed except our Christ, no law but sovereign love. There was no great announcement to his lowly humble birth, but to us he's the greatest man who lives upon the earth. We count it more than privilege to know him as a friend. We cherish all he stands for and will right to the end. Amen. Amen. He says he's not a preacher, he's modest as can be. But get him in the pulpit and it isn't hard to see. He was foreordained a prophet, let men call it what they will. God granted us great favor when he gave us Brother Bill, find a little flock. Hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. <laughs> Who composed that? I think his mother did. <laughs> that's I'm not worthy of those things of saying that, but. That's more to me than all the money in the world. See, you know, as Saint somebody regards you as his servant. See, as, as God's servant. May I ever live true to that is my prayer. God ever bless you. My thoughts will always be for you. And I expressly love you too. Now, oh, we've just got so many things we could just take off all day and never get into the world and see so many fine things. I have a, a vision from the Lord I was going to say something about. And, uh, and uh, someone had dreamed a dream that, oh, I thought was so outstanding of the coming of the Lord. And I, a little Rebecca, my daughter back there, I, even if I did make a little fun of her a while ago, she'd come out with one big kind of a, a hats on. I said, now, honey, it looks like a bird's nest. I said, sticks all in it and everything. I got it. I said, go take it off. And then she got back at me. In a few minutes, she come back. You know, the way she got back at me is go back. She come in with a great big pocketbook packet. I said, where'd that thing come from? She said, daddy, 
She says, I had big feet, so I guess I just take a big pocket of that. So, all these. But she said she had dreamed twice of she and I riding in the car and me telling her of the Lord's near appearing. Same dream, second time. I'm waiting for the third. Maybe the Lord then will give me what it means. Now, there's so many things to be said, but let's get right down to the Word now. Everybody's feeling good, I hope. And if you're not, I pray that God will make you feel good before this service is over. That there will not be a feeble person in our midst this morning when this service is over. Now, we got to remember that Christ died for the ungodly. And that was us. See, that's us. And He died for us that He might save us. Now, can you hear all around good? Way back in the back, can you hear all right back there? Is it coming in the back there? Oh, okay. All right. Now, I want to read some of his word. First, let's us turn now to the book of Joel. And I want to read the first verse, first to the fourth verse, and then the second to the tw- second chapter and the 25th verse, and Genesis 20 and 7. Now, I do appreciate, now if you get tired and want to go out, go ahead, see, but... This will be my last message to the church for this part of the church for some time. And we're expecting a healing service this morning. And I, I want this message, if God will bless it, to, to uh, sink deep into our hearts so we'll get the meaning of what it means. Now we're here to express, to, uh, to say the things that we believe and prove it by the Scripture. That the Scripture says so, and then may God turn and prove it that it's true. Right? Make it real. Just like any... You say this is a sunflower seed. Plant it and see what it is. Then it comes up a sunflower. That settles it. It was a sunflower. See? That's all. Now, and if some of them are changed seats. Every once in a while, somebody sit down. The others uh, get up and wait a little while. And I will be just as brief as I can. Now, remember, pray for me and... Just be loyal to the church now. Stay right here to the church that, with Brother Neville and uh, you people and so visiting. Well, now come right on back. And now I'm on these meetings, going on them without any definitely calling. But I just can't lay around. The world's a dying. See, and uh, Paul had that experience once, and he was going down to another country, and then he had a Macedonian call on the road. Now God could give a Macedonian call any time. I cancel anything when God gives a call. I'm just doing the best I can. Going to this corner, sowing seeds, and over here, sow a few seeds, and over here, throw, sow a few seeds. I know the fowls, the air, gather many of them up, and some of them chokes and so forth. But there might be a few in there come up too, you know, on good ground. So that's just um, sow the seed is the main thing. A very strange reading for us. Uh, Easter message. Joel, the first chapter. The word of the Lord that came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old man, and give ear, ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and let their children another generation. That which the palmer worm has left has the locust eaten. And that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. Now the 25th verse of the second chapter. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my uh, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. In Genesis, the twenty, uh, the Genesis, the twentieth uh, chapter of Genesis, and the seventh verse. I want to read this to follow the uh, for a context for this text that I'm, I'm fixing to take. I'll begin with the sixth verse to get a background to this. 
And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I, for I also will help thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restoreth her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Now, I draw from this a text, uh, or from this scripture reading, a conclusion of a text called Restore. Now, after Brother Neville preached this morning, that notable message, at the last thing he said on his last thoughts was to be restored. And so that gave me the idea right there, to restore. Now, I rushed home and got my dictionary and so forth and some scripture notes and begin to copy some things down. And then I got Webster's Dictionary to find out the right definition for restore. To restore means to return to the former owner or to bring back to the former a state of condition. And we can enforce a claim to be restored. Now, that's what Webster says the word restore means. To bring back to the former owner. Or to bring back to a former state of condition. And if a claim is made on something to make that restoration, you can enforce it Emma. to make it come back to its right place. And may God bless the feeble words now. To restore means to bring back or to restore. Uh, a claim can be enforced. Now, to bring anything back to its rightful owner. Where it belongs. Therefore, some way it went away from its rightful owner and can wander around anywhere. But to restore it is to bring it back to it who really owns it. Or to bring it back to its natural estate where it was at the first time. Bring it back into its natural condition. And in order to do this, we have a right to enforce, if there is a law, Amen. to enforce this rightful condition of restoration, Amen. to restore. Like if somebody stole some property and they're holding the property captive, then you can take the law and go to this person and the law forces, enforces this person to restore this property back to its natural owner into its male Heaven. first estate. Hallelujah. Enforcement. Oh, what a text. How I'd like to have two days on that. <laughs> Enforce. Uh, Brother Neville preached for us. I'm just going to talk to you and teach a Sunday school lesson so it'll, it'll uh, get it to continue on I hope with what he had <laughs> in force then we are the have the privilege to enforce upon Satan Amen. the claims that God give us Amen. for God has a law and his word is a law and God in this word made certain claims to the church Amen. Therefore, we have a right to force these claims Hallelujah. upon Satan and say, give it back. Amen. And he has to do it. Amen. 
Because we can take God's agent, the Holy Spirit, go right down on our knees and say it's thus saith the law. He's got to give it up. That's all because the Holy Spirit said to make him do it. The law of the land is to enforce it's by the land, for the land. But the law of the Spirit of God is to force Satan to give up that which he has unrightfully, deceitfully taken from God. Amen. Souls of man he took from God. Souls of women, children. Sickness of the body. He placed upon people where God made them in His image. Amen. To be like Him. And the church is given the rightful legal rights. Amen. By the Bible. To take the Holy Spirit. Amen. And enforce this upon them. Praise the Lord. I believe I just quoted at the last meeting here. I'm not sure. But a brother came to Louisville from down in Georgia and left his car sitting over there and someone stole it. And he had his clothes, his wife's clothes, his children's clothes, his brother Evan, sure. I, they're usually here. They drive 1,500 miles every day when we have service here. Uh, coming in here to have service. And a poor fellow was here without anything and 700 and something miles from home. And he didn't know what to do. He turned it into the police, but they had a big racket in Louisville. They were stealing cars and painting them and you can, don't have to have a title there to sell it and they can make you a title in a few minutes to any number you want to put on it. And So they were having a terrible time. So we got down on our knees. Amen. See, now, Jesus wouldn't have had to do that for He was the Word. Amen. Now, we are not the Word. The Word of the Lord came to the prophets. They wasn't the Word, but the Word come to them. But Jesus was the Word. He didn't have to pray. He was God Himself. But we are are His prophets, His servants, who the Word of the Lord comes to. Then the prophet is vindicated by whether it's the Word of the Lord or not, but what He says comes to pass. So then, we had a scripture here that Jesus said, Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, and if they will agree, I'll be in their midst, and if they will agree on touching any one certain thing and ask it, don't doubt it, they shall have what they've asked. It'll be given to them. Now there's there's the law. Now the one that's here to enforce that law is the Holy Spirit. Amen. How about people who don't believe in the Holy Spirit? would reject Him. See, you're rejecting your own peace and mercy. Yeah. Now, we got on our knees, about five men with Brother Fred Sothman and, and many of the others was there, four or five men, and we knelt down and I pleaded this case before God. And then I took the word of the promise and sent it forth the great Holy Spirit as He took the Word to serve the summons. A vision broke and I saw a man going towards Bowling Green, Kentucky with a yellow shirt on driving this truck. The Holy Spirit come upon him, condemned him. And he turned around about halfway. I saw him come back and park that car on a certain street over across the river here. I raised up and told the brother, Thus saith the Lord. And when they started out, they went on the road and there was a car sitting there half empty with gasoline where the tank half empty where it had been filled up just enough to take him halfway to Bowling Green and bring him back. Now those men are sitting right here this morning as a witness. What is it? Enforcing. Give it back. That's it. That's what it's talking about. Restore it. Amen. Bring it back to its right owner. Amen. And if Satan has robbed you of the privilege of being a son or a daughter of God, we have a right this morning Amen. by the Holy Spirit to enforce the claim of God. Amen. Bring him back. Amen. If he's afflicted you and made you sick, 
We have a right before God to enforce the laws of God. Amen. By stripes we are healed. Amen. 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 Bring him back. Amen. Turn him loose. You're taking him out under death and we claim him. Hallelujah. Bring him back. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the enforcement. Restore it back to its natural condition again. A man's sick. Baby's sick. Woman's sick. See, they're out of their natural condition. Then we have a right to enforce our claim. Not our claim. It's our claim because God gave it to us. Amen. By his stripes we were healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. Yeah. Now we have a right to enforce that law. And the, the law giver, the Holy Spirit himself is sure, the agent of God to see that it's done that way. Amen. Amen. Now the only way he can work is when you let him work. Yeah. See? You've got to believe it. There's a law. Oh, if I ever get to my text. There's a law. There's a law given amongst everything. You know, a fish has a law. And that fish can stand up here in water and he has a law within him. If he'll just let go of that law that's in him, he can sink plumb to the bottom of the sea. Won't bother him a bit. Won't break one cell. You try to do it. Yeah. That law is not in you. You can't do it. But the fish can. He deflates himself of that air. Such a way that he can, there's nothing in him to burst open. And he's made that way. He knows it. And he can enforce that law. Yeah. To take him plumb to the bottom of the sea and then raise him back up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a law in Christ. Yeah. Amen. That law's in man. Yeah. You can bury him to the deepest grave, the deepest sea, or the, the lowest hell. Amen. There's a law of the Spirit of God that'll raise him up again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A bird has a law. Now its body's material. It's earthbound, sets on the earth here. But it has a law within it. That the way it spreads its wings, it can fly plumb out of sight. Yeah. That's against science. Yeah. They claim it's it's earthbound. Gravitation has to over here, but it can defy gravitation, lift itself right off of it, and go right on out. Yeah. Because it has to put that law that's in it to work. And it's built to possess that law. Amen. Yeah. Now I begin to feel religious. Yeah. Now we have a law. The law of the life in us. Amen. We don't... Only thing you have to do, you are made and born and placed here in the body of Christ as sons and daughters of God. You don't have to knock down to the devil. We've got a law. That's a law of the Holy Spirit. The only thing you don't have to do is know how to let go and let God. <laughs> you keep fighting at it, see? And it won't never work. When you let go and let God, that's all. See? Amen. If the fish said, wait, I'll catch my breath real good. I'll breathe up a little oxygen in me and I'll see if I can go down. No, he does that. He'll burst open. See? Amen. The bird says, I'll see how fast I can run down here. Maybe I'll take off. No, he won't do it. He'll fall down. See? He's got to know how to control how that law can control him. And the same way it is with us. It isn't what we fight and pull and, and hurry and... And oh, if I don't get this, if I don't get that, that's not it. It's to know that the law of life is in you. Amen. And you just let go Amen. and let God. Then He takes you to your healing, takes you to the baptism of the Spirit, or anything that He's promised, any claim Amen. that He's given is yours. And by letting go and letting God, now if you if the officer was going to um, uh, going to take uh, uh, the fellow that stole your property was going to take him to court and you keep pulling him back. Well, I don't notice whether you should do this or not. He'll never get him there. Just let him go. That's what you do. Let Satan just get away. All the doubts and everything flee from your mind. Then God will raise you up. Good. Now, Hallelujah. it's Easter time. Oh, I like Easter. Yes, sir. But there's too much on Easter day about bunny rabbits and ducks and pink chickens and pretty hats and new dresses. And that's not Easter. Easter is the resurrection. Restoring. To restore back. 
It's God's restoring time. Amen. You look out over the earth. God is restoring. Restoring what? Nature. That's right. He's restoring the flowers. He's restoring the leaves. He's restoring the fruits of the field. What is it? God is restoring. It's Easter. It means to bring it back. What is it? There's been a, a sentence, a claim. Easter claims are the, the, the flower claims it has a right to rise again. See? And God's law of nature pulls the earth around and makes that law of God in nature bring forth an Easter, a resurrection. It's beautifully. The return of the sun to restore what the winter killed while it was from the earth. God sends the earth back around the sun as we're told from way back here. The earth, the earth went away from the sun. Went back out here. That's the way a sinner does. Gets away from the S-O-N. Yeah. Well, this is the S-U-N. But when this earth begins to come back and when it's out there, death strikes it. The winter. It kills every living thing it can kill. Out in here. And now, when the earth gets back around... The seeds is laying to the ground. They're frozen. The pups run out of them. The, and everything's gone, but there's a little life preserved. And as soon as the sun gets back in position with the earth again, then there is an Easter, a restoration. Hey. Up comes the flowers again. Up comes everything. All that the winter killed, the sun restores. All that winter's death killed, the Son of Life restores. And so is it now with the people. All that the winter's coldness of cold formal religion killed out there, the nearing of the Son of God in these last days coming to His church restores it back to life again. Amen. I will Amen. restore, saith the Lord. See? God restores His flowers his leaves, his nature, his seed of the earth, and therefore we know then that God will restore also his habitation. He will restore his Eden. He will restore everything that death killed. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, the only way it can ever remain dead is let it lay in the wrong place. But if it falls in the right place, it's got to come back to life again. Amen. So God let us fall in the right channel. Amen. That's right. For our restoration. All that the winter kill, then the sun restores. Returning of the sun, what does it do? It forces, listen, it forces death when the sun, the spring sun, comes back in line of the earth again. It actually forces death to give up. Amen. It's dead. Amen. Amen. To a resurrection. Amen. For what? A restoration. Yes. Praise God. A restore again. What does it? The sun. Coming at God's law. God set the earth in law. Gravitation law. Everything in nature works according to God's law. And the flower served its term. The seed served its term. It died into the earth. And then there is a restoration. And now it's laying there dead. Hey. There's not a thing we could take one of these here lights like this and turn it on it. It would never do any good. There's no way for us to do it. But God has a law that when that sun comes on to the seed, it forces that life out of the seed. Death can't hold it anymore. Amen. God has set all of His laws uh, to serve Him, both natural and spiritual, working according to His Word, regardless Amen. of the conditions. Amen. I love that. Amen. I had a scripture here on that. Yes, God sets all of His laws in motion. Think of it. Let it soak in now because we're coming to a healing service in a few minutes. See? Amen. God set all of His laws in a motion that it must work according to His own Word. Amen. Are you getting it? Amen. See? His Word, His laws, 
has to work according to his word. Amen. Amen. He commanded the sun. He commanded the moon. He commanded the earth. He commanded nature. Amen. And they all fall right in line and all the laws work in harmony with God's spoken word. And the law of life that's in us will also bring us to a resurrection. It's got to. It's impossible for it not. That's the reason the law of life that was in Christ, when the word was spoken, said, I'll not suffer my Holy One to see corruption, neither will I leave his soul in hell. There wasn't enough time there wasn't enough devils. There wasn't enough anything to keep Christ in that grave till he, his body began to rot. Amen. Amen. Because the law of God would bring the word to pass. Amen. And the law of God by the Holy Spirit brings any promise to pass. Amen. You get it? Regardless of the conditions. Job said, though the skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh I'll see God. Amen. Regardless of how little we are, how low we are, how impure we are, how unholy we are, how sick we are, how afflicted we are, the law of God's Spirit by His Word makes it obey him. Amen. Forces the issue and says, Give it back. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. Oh, if we could just think of that for a minute. Forces it regardless of conditions. No matter what the condition is, the law of God's word forces the condition to cope with his word. Amen. See? It's got to. Now, if a flower is laying there and it's dead, the seeds are rotten, gone, the pup's gone out, that doesn't have one thing to do with it. Amen. It raises again. Because God set a law for it to rise again. When Job laid in the ground, perhaps when he seen Jesus coming, was 4,000 years before Jesus got here. You can imagine how a human body looked in 4,000 years. Probably not enough ashes left to go on the end of a spoon. Amen. But Job said, yet in my flesh, I'll see God. Amen. Who I shall see for myself. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 27, that after his death and burial and resurrection, that many of the saints that slept in the dust of the earth rose out of the dust. Amen. Why? It was that prophet speaking with the word of God and the word had been spoken the law of God by the Spirit raised them up. The Bible said they have come into the city and appeared to many. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus raise, but the saints raised with Him. Why? Over the Psalms, it said, Lift up ye everlasting Amen. gates and be ye lifted up. Let the Lord of glory come in. Well, when He conquered death, hell, grave, sickness, rose on the third day, He ascended on high and led captivity captive. What was it? Those that were in captive that looked forward for the promise that we have now. Amen. Oh, brother. Hallelujah. Never even had the Holy Ghost. But believed and give a good testimony. Amen. And by it they stopped the mouth of lions, quenched oh, the yeah. violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Amen. Oh. Women received their dead, raised to life again without the promise. Oh, oh. Amen. But they looked forward Amen. under a sheep sacrifice My God. that could not Divorce sin, they could only cover sin. But they believed that there was coming one. And by their faith, way beyond the shadow. Amen. 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 They claimed it. And steadfast they wandered in deserts and in sheepskins and goatskins, was afflicted and destituted yes. and tormented. Oh, those people looking forward to that resurrection. Yes. And through that, died in faith with the testimony on that Easter Amen. morning. That law of God which has spoke the word to Job and those other prophets they raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh my. There you are. Regardless of the conditions, some people get so guilty minded that they don't want to face any judgment. Oh, many people, it ain't hard to die. Anybody lose their mind something or other and do something rational. 
Some of them have their bodies burned. Take it out on the sea and throw the ashes to the four corners of this, the four winds of the sea. That don't stop the judgment. You come right on just the same. Yes, sir. See, no matter regardless of conditions, you're going to meet God somewhere. Amen. You've got to come to Him. You've got to meet Him. See, because why? He has spoke a word and put a law with that word. And the law is His own law, His own life behind it. That's the reason He swore by Himself is none greater. <laughs> he had to take an oath because no covenant should be confirmed without an oath. And the only way that He could before He did take it by Himself and Himself become the oath. Amen. Oh, brother. When God became man and was the oath, Amen. made Himself the oath. And by His own death, burial, and resurrection, he proved his laws was right. Said, you destroy this building, I'll raise it up again in three days. Amen. I, personal pronoun, I'll raise it up again in three days. I'll bring it up. Just destroy it and see what happens. <laughs> For he knew the law of God. He knew what it was. He knew that it had to work according to the word. He knew that the word of God had been spoke to a prophet and said, Amen. I'll not suffer my holy one to see corruption. That settled it. Amen. That settled it. Then the law of God's got to work by that word. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. We're coming down to a great thing in a minute. <laughs> See? See, where the law of God's word, the law of God is with his word. Now, if the court writes out a word, it is certain, certain thing, a penalty to do so and so. All right. Now, that's the word of the court and the law of the court enforces the word of the court. Amen. And God speaks something, and that is a law, and the Holy Spirit here to enforce that law. Amen. 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 For the believer. Amen. You have to be ordained to do so. It takes a believer. You got to have the badge of believer. Amen. Somebody says you got power. No, but we got authority. Amen. That's it. Not power, but authority. We ain't got enough power to do nothing like I said some time ago. A little policeman here in Lowell will stand there. He's little than I am. Little bitty fellow, his hat was pulled down over his ears, and car, oh, his uniform about half hanging off of him. He walked out there on the street, the little cap pistol like on his sign, little stick in his hand, a little whistle. Walked out of there, a pair of white gloves on, and them, them cars, some of them 350 horsepower, whirling by that street like, like lightning, just zoom, zoom. Well, that poor little fellow couldn't stop, uh, he couldn't have stopped the runaway pony. From his strength, certainly not. But he walked out in the street, a big bad shining, blew that whistle and held up that hand, brother. Three hundred power horsepower motor squeak brakes and everything else. It wasn't the power of the man; it was the authority he had. That's it. That's the church. It might be a bunch of holy rollers, so called, or whatever you want to call it, but it's the authority. It's the authority behind it. That's what does it. Regardless of conditions, God's law works with His Word. Now, it won't work with your creed. It'll work with the Word. Uh, it just works with the Word. That's all. Now, regardless of condition, Abraham, as we read a while ago in our text, Abraham's wife had to be restored back. Why? God gave a promise to Abraham, and here a king had took her to marry for his wife. Well, what would he have done? Put Abraham to death in a minute. That's what Abraham said. I pray that he say that to he's seen that uh, uh, Almec had done caught him, this Philistine king there. He said, now you, I pray you, you say that I am your brother because if you're a beautiful woman and said, now if he uh, sees you're beautiful, and I, 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 I'll be killed because he'll take you and marry you. And so Amalek, uh, caught her and his man brought her in. She's a beautiful woman. And by the way, she's only 100 years old. And she, uh, she, uh, God had just showed what he's going to do to all of us, through them. You know, I've been through all that in my texts and on the tapes and so forth. Proving that by the Word of God. That's exactly told Amen. by Abraham and Sarah what he's going to do to the whole race. That's right. Amen. Now, there she was. And so Amalek taking her to be his wife. Amalek. And so, uh, he is already now to take her to be his wife. And what? God had said to Abraham, Amen. By Sarah, you'll have this baby. Amen. And here was a young man taking her. 
Here is Abraham around about a hundred years old now too. Out there. But by that, you wish what God said there? Yes, I know the integrity of your heart. That's the reason I kept you from sinning against me. But you restore Amen. that woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Or her husband is a prophet. Let him pray for you. If you don't, I'm just going to wipe you off the face of the earth. <laughs> there you are. What? God, where her has to stand. No man could touch Sarah. God had made a promise. Sarah, a type of the church, the true church. The free church, the free woman, the free child. Type of the born again church with a promise. Let them say whatever they want to. Call it holy roller fanaticism. They've tried to stop it since Pentecost. And they'll never do it. Amen. Amen. Or keep, just keep your hands off of it. That's all. God's going to take that and do something with it. This is certain as I'm standing here. Amen. We're coming right down through the age of it. Now, in a few minutes, God help me. I'll prove it to you where we're at. Thank you. Amen. Right. Amen. You're, they're never going to destroy it. It can't be destroyed. Hallelujah. That's right. Take your hands off of her. Why? There come the natural seed. The natural seed had to come if it would. If Sarah would have married this other man, the natural seed would have never been born. So if God so protected the course for the natural seed, how much more for the spiritual royal seed has He protected? Satan, give them back. Turn them loose. You're not smothering them out there in them organizations and things. They're free people. Let them alone. (laughs) Turn them loose. The royal seed. Now, God talking of restoring... Now here in Joel, he's talking about, I preached on this once before and tuck it in another angle about uh, never thoroughly went through it as I intend to do today and won't have time to do it where it ought to be done. But God is speaking here in Joel of God is speaking of his fruit tree that he had planted. God planted a fruit tree. He planted on the day of Pentecost. And he brought that tree there for a purpose. He wanted it to Bear His fruit word. God's word. He wanted a church that would keep His word. All down through the age, Eve had failed to keep it. The Jews had failed to keep it. The law had failed. All had failed. So God planted Him a tree. A tree. Now remember there was two trees in the Garden of Eden. We know that. You can call them whatever you want to. I have my idea. But anyhow, one of them was a defiled tree. It got defiled and the other wasn't defiled. That tree of life come from God out of heaven. Amen. He said, your fathers eat manna and are dead. But this tree, you eat and you live forever. And the angel guarded that tree of life from the Garden of Eden. Kept it in Eden. That tree of life is in Eden. Now, spiritually speaking now. Notice. Now, when this tree that God planted, it was to bear nine different kinds of fruit. Nine different kinds, which means nine spiritual gifts. Nine fruits of the Spirit to go with the nine spiritual gifts. That was God's tree. He planted it in the earth on the day of Pentecost. Now, let's stop always so limited with time. I'm going to skip down here a few scriptures and go down here to Psalms the first. David saw this tree a long time ago. And of his writing of songs for something joyful, that's the first thing he wrote about. He saw this tree and it was planted by the rivers of water. This tree. He and he shall be like a tree. God's tree. Planted where? By the rivers. Rivers, plural. The rivers of water, singular. Not a Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, and so forth. No, no. Uh, just rivers of one water. Amen. <laughs> Nine spiritual gifts by the same Spirit. Amen. Nine fruits of the Spirit coming from the same channel. Amen. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of waters. David saw it. And he spoke. He said, Blessed is that man. And notice, he said he could not die. His leaves would not wither. No, no. No matter what they do, they'll never kill that tree. Why? It's where he's planted. That's what does it. It's where he's planted. He's planted by the rivers of water. Now notice David said, 
His, his roots won't die. You know, you take a tree, a big old tree. I, when I was a boy, I used to go out and with us boys, we'd go out and had a big old tree we used to set on a big old beech tree. And the winds would blow and I wouldn't look like that thing so much that the top looked like it'd blow the, the thing over. But you know, every time wind blows on a tree, it rocks the tree and it loosens up the roots so that they can just dig deeper and get a better hold. And that's the way mockery, laughing, making fun of a Christian. What it does is persecution shakes the Christian to make him pray more, dig down, get a better hold. So he can stand the storm. Now what if a man's planted in such a thing as by the river where the springs, nine different springs feeding into him? Oh, my. What, a, what an establishment he has. And a man that's planted by the river, the rivers of water, one water, one spirit, there are gifts of healing, same spirit. Gifts of prophecy, same spirit. All the same spirit, but many gifts. One giver. Now David saw him, and he was planted by this tree. Now he could not die. Now notice why. He had life in the roots. Where is the roots of the life of the tree stays? In the roots. Certainly comes up and bears its fruit. All right. Watch. His roots had life in them to bring forth his fruit in season. Amen. Now remember, this tree will not cast its fruit. Amen. Now you take a tree and put it away from water. The first thing you know, you got little apples. They're all knotty and worm eaten. But it'll cast its, its, its crop. And that's what's the matter of the churches today. You done got away from that river. Yeah. Yeah. Got away from them gifts of the Spirit. They got this a church natural. And they get away from the spiritual gifts and the spiritual things. And they cast their fruit. Yeah. What do they do? They're, they're believers. Live with the world. Act like the world. Steal, cheat, lie. Smoke, drink, gamble. Have bunk old parties in the church to pay the preacher and everything else. Soup suppers, dances. See, they cast their fruit. It's just like the world. And the unbeliever looks and says, no difference in that person to me. That's what caused communism to rise in Russia. Amen. That's the reason they burned up the Catholic church in, down in Mexico. When I was there and seen those lion pits where those, and those uh, places where they burnt those little babies. Where those nuns had these babies. Even human bodies, full grown human bodies was laying in there. In the lion pits. Why'd they do? They cast their crop, see? And God shook them off the tree. That was all. See? But a man that's planted, not stuck out, but planted by the rivers of water, he shall bring forth his fruit, watch, in his, his fruit in his season. Are you reading it? Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that says not to see the scornful stand the way of sinners. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. He shall bring forth his fruit in his season, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. See? Notice, ungodly is not so. And he won't stand with him in the judgment. Amen. See? Now, he shall bring forth his fruit in his season. Watch each his, the personal pronoun there. It's his fruit, God's fruit. In the season that the the prophet is bringing it. It'll be in the prophet's season. God's fruit in God's time by the prophet's season. Amen. He shall bring forth his fruit in his season. See if there is a two he is there. Bring forth his, God's fruit. See, in the season that the messenger is ordained to come, he'll bring forth those. I remember that. The messenger that brings the fruit of God will bring it in God's season, in the season of the bringer. Amen. He will bring forth his fruit in his season. And it cannot wither. Why? He's got predestinated fruit in there. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. It can't destroy it because it's predestinated. Amen. Now, Ephesians 5, 1 and 5, brother, it said, Sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What happened? He said, God, by His foreknowledge, predestinated us unto the adoption of children of God by Jesus Christ. Amen. God, by His foreknowledge, predestinated everything that would happen. Right down along the road. By His foreknowledge, He foresaw it. Therefore, from beginning, He could tell the end. Amen. 
Therefore, it was predestinated fruit in the the root of this tree. Yep. And this tree could not wither because it was holding yeah. predestinated fruit. Yeah. 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 Now, that's a tree that Joel spoke about here, see? It cannot die. The worms eat it down, but it couldn't die. In its root, it had the predestinated truth. It had God's Word, this tree did. And this tree is is that tree that all the way it, it was put in the Garden of Eden. All trees by the woman died. We all die by the woman. By birth, we all die. But through woman come death, for this birth come by woman. All right, then this has to die because it's sin. But the birth, the new birth that come by Christ cannot die. That's one tree and the other tree. See? And this tree, though it's been persecuted, made fun of since the very beginning of the Garden of Eden, it cannot die. It's predestinated. It's been clubbed and beat and my everything done to it. And what happened? It cannot die. His, he will not die. He can't because he's holding in him the predestinated Word of God. It has to come forth. For his fruit is in his own season. Predestinated season. That no matter. Joel saw every one of them eat down to the bottom. But he said I will restore it saith the Lord. For the predestination of God lays in the roots of the tree. It's got to come forth because it's holding the predestinated word of God. Um, Oh what a tree. (laughs) My. That tree. It started to grow back there in Eden. What happened? There was a bunch come forth of Cain's children, some bugs, and come over and eat it down to a stalk. And God took a crop off of it and put it in the ark and carried it through. Yeah. Hey. All the way down, it's been the same way, down through the lines of judgment. Israel, on down. And then at Pentecost, where the church for the bride tree, he, he set an order on Pentecost the tree that was predestinated to bring forth his fruit in the season. Amen. Now, go and find. The fruits is being done just fine. It bloomed out on the day of Pentecost. Let's see what happened on the day of Pentecost. Jesus said, The works that I do shall you do also. They heal the sick. Now on the day let's see how it started. On the day of Pentecost, a few days after the resurrection, fifty days after Easter, there come uh, there come uh, a rushing mighty wind out of heaven. Now today we make it different. The minister stands up and takes it. I'll put your name on the book. See? <laughs> Our son, bachelor, with his collar turned around, said, come up here and take the kosher bread. Now, then you become a member of the church. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Yeah. The minister says, come join our group. Well, they're both wrong. On the day of Pentecost, there came from heaven. Not off the pulpit, up the road. <laughs> From heaven, a what? A priest? No. No. A minister? No. What was it? A sound like a rushing mighty wind. Amen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Cloven tongues set up on them. Stammering. They couldn't talk. They were so full of glory. Amen. Holy Ghost filled them. Out in the streets they went jabbering. Just, and act like even the... Dignified congregation stood out there and said, Well, these men are full of new wine. They're all drunk. Look at them men and women, how they're staggering and carrying on. Now that's, thus saith the Spirit. That's the Scripture. That's how the church was organized. Not organized, but ordained. A lot of difference in the two words. Notice, there they were. Now, and you know what, you Catholic people? The Blessed Virgin Mary was with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if God wouldn't let Mary come to heaven without receiving the Holy Ghost, how are you going to get there anything short of it? I just think of it. That's right. Mary was a woman. And she had to wait up there until she lost all of her dignity and pride. Filled with the Spirit. And here they come acting like drunk people. The Bible said they did. Amen. They said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, the spokesman, the minister in the group, stood up and said, these are not full of new wine. As you suppose, seeing it's just the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. The one I'm reading from today. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. 
and I'll show wonders in the heavens above and in the earth signs. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, Peter preached on Pentecost after the same prophet that I'm preaching today about. Amen. Planting this tree and that's where he planted it. Amen. Oh, it done fine. They went out and had spiritual gifts. They healed the sick. They preached. They were thrown in jail. They were willing to suffer for the word's sake. Yes. If you went to another nation as a wishy-washy, you would make a very good American. Amen. If you went over, if you was uh, going in out to uh, Japan, you slipped around behind the line and said, "This fellow, I'm for you. You know, I'm for you, but I'm over on the other side. You traitor! Amen. You ought to be shot. Yeah. That's right. You're a traitor. Sure. And then that's the same way it is. A man that knows the word of God and will compromise on it because some organization tells him he has to do it Amen. that way. Amen. That's a traitor. Amen. Right. But these men wasn't traitors. <laughs> they didn't care how much. Uh, uh, well, how they carried on, how their church manners was, screaming and crying and shouting and, and jabbering off languages that seemed like uh, the Jews taught one another, couldn't understand, and man out there in the audience of other nations and other tongues began to hear what they were saying. They didn't know what they were saying, they were jabbering, but other people out there understood it. And they said, these persons are certainly drunk. But Peter said, they're not drunk, but they're filled with the Spirit. So that Every one of them went to martyrdom, except John. And he was burned 24 hours in the vat of grease, and they couldn't even burn the spirit out of him. And then he died a natural death, the only one, John the Revelator. Now, that is right. Notice, now, what taking place. On this, God planted a tree to bring forth nine spiritual gifts. Gifts of His Spirit. The same Spirit was in Christ come down upon the church at eternal life. Now, gifts of the Spirit was in the church, and it was growing, bearing forth fruit everywhere. They thought out of their self. They didn't organize nothing. They just went ahead and was brothers. They had no, I'm glad that little thing was on there, no creed but Christ, no law but love, no book but the Bible. That's what I believe. See? And that's the way they did. The worlds are parish. See, everywhere. So notice, these fellows, when they were doing that, how glorious that church was, and God was with them. The Bible said, and Jesus met them before His ascension up. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, now these signs, now today, what kind of a sign we call a believer? He shakes hands with the pastor, he belongs to the church, he has his name on the book because his mother's had a name, or his father had a name on the book. But that wasn't what Jesus said. Jesus said these signs, that's church natural. We're talking about church spiritual. We're talking about a spiritual tree, not a natural tree. We're getting to those two trees after a bit. See? A spiritual tree. Jesus said these signs shall follow them that hangs on this tree. These signs shall follow them that's getting their life out of this tree. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. If they should take up a serpent and drink deadly things, it would not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. There's the kind of signs, he said, would follow the believer. Where is it today? Right. He give the world an example of what would be the, the believer's sign. Right. And he said it would be far better that a millstone was hanged at your neck and drowned in the depths of the sea than even to bring a fence to one of them. Amen. For their angels always behold my Father's face, which is in heaven. The angels. Notice. Now, there they were. And that tree was planted. It was doing great work. We know they went about everywhere. The Lord, while on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls was added. Amen. Baptized and went into the church. And how great fellowship they had. And everybody was nobody needing anything. Everybody was kind, good-hearted. And one another, this is all one big family. Wonderful. And there came by a little old, ugly-looking, gritty-teeth beetle. <laughs> that lives in four different stages, as Joel saw him. Four stage insect destroyer come forth to destroy that beautiful tree of God. Uh -huh. Think of it. Now I'm going to read off some of Joel's, what he said. Joel, the first chapter. The first thing, now there's four different beetles there. Now, but the, it's actually one beetle. Amen. It's one beetle in four different stages. Now watch this little beetle come by for this for this great beautiful tree of God. We'll call it a tree, which was a church. The first was a polymer worm. That's a little thing, just a little bitty insect of a worm. What did he do? That polymer worm. 
He come along to destroy the fruit of the tree. That's the first thing. Now let's go back in history and see what the first thing was. Was a, a dignified group got amongst the common people. And they said, well, this is good that you can heal the sick and you can do these things. That's wonderful. So you know what we ought to do? We ought to kind of uh, get it out where the bigger class of people understand it. The better class, the mayor, the, the judges and so forth, and the, the, the dignitaries of the city. And as long as you all are carrying on the way you are, they'll never come around you. See? They're afraid of you. <laughs> Somebody said that. They still are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right. So that's right. They're afraid of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Excuse me. I used to sing a little song. It's the old, you ever hear the old time religion? Anybody ever heard that song? Tis the old time religion. I used to sing a little song like this years ago. I said, it's the old time Holy Spirit. And the devil won't go near it. That's the reason people fear it. But it's good enough for me. <laughs> it's so good I want no other. For it makes me love my brother. And it brings things from undercover. So it's good enough for me. <laughs> That's right. It will make you stop your lying. It will save you when you're dying. It will start the devil flying. And it's good enough for me. That's right. That's the reason people don't want it. Now, now, it's God. They didn't want Jesus. They said, this man, the church, the big dignified church, said, you come to tell us who we are? We'll give you to understand we're Dr. PhD, LLQS, and my, all this. Well, I'm the high priest. I'm this, that, or that. And you tell me why you were born in sin. You're nothing but an illegitimate child. Your mother... Was uh, to be have you before you and your father. The father was ever married. He said, "Who can accuse me of sin? Amen. Who can accuse me? All right. Sin is disbelieving God's word. In other words, he said, "Show me where I'm not fulfilling the word to the to the to the hilt, right where it's supposed to be. Show me in the scripture where my days. If I don't do the works of my father, then don't you believe me? So now you claim to be that, and let's see you do it." Oh my, from henceforth they asked him nothing. See? They let him alone. Like the devil flew into him. I said that he thought he'd just jump in anyway, but he found out that had a million volts in that wire. He jumped off of that real quick, you see, because he couldn't handle that. And that was one thing, sure. So this little polymer worm come around to take off the fruits. I have two pages of fruits. I just want to read some of it. First thing, the first fruit he took off was brotherly love. That's right. That's one of the things that kills the church right there when brotherly love. Amen. Yes, sir. Then the next fruit he took off the tree. You remember, love is the first fruit of the tree. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, yeah. goodness, meekness, faith, patience. That's right. Amen. And the Holy Ghost. Now, nine spiritual gifts with nine fruits of the tree and so forth. All right. Now, the first, he got to eating on the fruit of the tree. Now, let's picture a big tree of God's tree. It's bearing nine spiritual gifts. They're healing the sick. They're speaking in tongues. They're casting out devils. They're doing great works and preaching the unadulterated word of God. No denomination of time down. They're free. Amen. Doing a great work. So, in come this little old devil, setting up with his two horns, setting out in front like a grasshopper, knowing his little old greedy teeth. That's his first, the palmer worm. He come in to eat off brotherly love. He said, you know, so-and-so did so-and-so over at so-and-so's church. I wouldn't believe that bunch of people. See, there he is. First thing. Next, he wanted to eat on the fruit of faith. Faith in the word. Now look, how do you know that is the word? It's been translated so many times. That little devil's still eating. Sure. Right? That word's been translated so many times. He's this, that, and the other. Oh, he's uh, all this, see? Now that's another fruit to eat off of. Joy of salvation. Whoosh, you people make too much noise. Ooh. <laughs> my. Oh, how can you preach, Brother Bram? A woman said to me one time, No, it wasn't. It's a man. I believe he's, I hope he's here. He belongs to another church, but he said to me, He said, I was up to here the other day and I couldn't even hear you for them people crying. I said, if they, So, how in the world can you preach? I said, If they didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be preaching. <laughs> I used to have a friend of mine, Jim Poole, and I, we used to have an old dog. We called him Fritz. And, um, so this old dog, he'd, he'd go into anything that I, he treated but a skunk. He was afraid of a skunk because he smelled so. So I'd get him a skunk or the brush pile. The only thing he had to do is just pat him a little bit and say, Sicky, Sicky boy. He'd go get that skunk, see? Because I was patting him, saying, Sicky. Well, that's just what it is. When we, the worst thinker I know of is the devil. So when I'm bringing this word out and somebody says, hey, Amen, that's Sicky boy. <laughs> Hallelujah! Get, oh, 
we get him treated. <laughs> so we find out that he took away the joy. You know, David one time lost the joy of his salvation. He didn't lose his salvation, but he lost the joy of it. He cried, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. See? The joy. So this little old palmer worm began to eat that fruit of joy. Out. Now look here. You people make too much noise. I tell you, all this crying, this saying amen, this shouting, that's nonsense. There's nothing to that. See, first thing you know, he's sitting in a big morgue. You know, sitting there, all of them dead. Some of these embalming fluids of so-called doctrine of creeds pumped into their veins where the Spirit of God ought to be running. Where the old church creed pumped in there, no more they're icy cold and dead. Spiritual thermometer 90 below zero. You know, somebody say amen, everybody stretch your neck around like some kind of a goose or something. Well, no, not seven. It's a shame when the Spirit of God ought to be joy, peace, love. But this little old bug started eating on it and he'd all the joy away. And then next fruit on the tree is peace. Peace of mind, knowing that you're saved. They tell you, well, now, if you recite our creed, you're saved. If you join my church, you're saved. Well, now, this one says you're not saved. If you go there, you have to join our church to be saved. You have to say, Hail Mary. You have to have your name on this book. You have to have, oh, my, that would take all the joy out. But that's not God's tree. You know where you're at. Amen. That's hybrid. Always, you know what, my story about the mule, he's a hybrid. He don't know who his papa and mama either one was. See, he's a hybrid. But oh, a good pedigreed horse. He knows who his papa and mama was through generations. And a real good pedigreed Christian, too, that's got the Holy Ghost. He knows it fell on the day of Pentecost. He knows where he's at. He can chase his generations, come back, he's genealogist to the first beginning of it. Peter had it. On down through the nation and races, they've had it on down. A good pedigreed Christian knows where it comes from. Say, well, I'm Luther. <clears throat> I'm Presbyterian. Oh, you high bred. <laughs> why aren't you? Why aren't you? Well, you say, uh, what are, why are you born again? Born again of what? The Spirit of God. Amen. That's why you're not high bred. You're born correctly. Amen. Not with some church creed, but with the Spirit of God. God lives in you. Amen. Now, notice, this little insect started eating. So he eat off all the peace of mind. Oh, and on and on and on and on down. I got a page up here. All the fruits. What he done? Then this little di fella died out and he become a locust. That was the next stage. Was a locust. Now what does a locust do? A locust eats the leaves. That's right. A locust takes on to the leaves. What the palmer worm left, he left the leaves. He eat all the fruit off the tree. Then what tuck in? The locust come to eat. Eat what the palmer worm left. Now, what did he do? What did this palmer worm do? Destroy the leaves. What's the leaves for? Destroying divine fellowship. That's right. Now, he's, he's, he's Presbyterian. We don't have nothing to do with him. He's Nazarene. He's Pentecostal. He's this, that, that. We don't have nothing to do with him because he don't belong to our group. Have a meeting here for healing of the sick. Huh. Our church don't even believe in it. See? There you, you, what did that little old locust do? He took all the fellowship off. That's right. Took all the fellowship. What is fellowship? What does the leaves do? Makes it cool. Where are the birds flying under the leaves? <laughs> Cool off. There's your tree again. And he shall be like a tree that's planted. <laughs> See? All right. Where people can come and sit down under the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Cool off a little bit. Amen. You're all flustrated and don't know what's happening. Where you die, where you're saved or not. You don't know whether this church is right or that. So I just come down under the tree. It's got some leaves on it. And sit down there. And let the winds from heaven go to blowing like a Russian mighty wind through the leaves, you know. And, and you begin to cool off a little bit. And say, oh, I'm going down to tell that bunch of holy rollers what I think. Just sit down a while and you'll cool off. <laughs> you can't do it in yours because what's the matter? The locust has done eat it all off. <laughs> eat all the leaves off of it. And that's just might as well sit out there in the sun. <laughs> so you, it, ain't, it ain't no cooling there. All right. Now, so there's... But you know what we're supposed to do? The Bible said that the predestinated church, the predestinated sons of God, what do they do? Set in heavenly places. Hey. What is that coolness? Comfort. Feel it at home. Amen. Or everybody's wearing a tuxedo and, and next man this way and, and somebody looking at it. Hmm, look, she never got a permanent in her hair. Don't she look horrible? She don't even have an Easter 
frown down now than ever what it is. Don't you know, ever, yeah, Easter frown. That's about it. That's it. Back on. They don't even have an Easter. Why? Well, look at him. That same old suit he wore last year. Well, what do you know about that? You don't feel right there. I said to a little woman the other day, poor little woman, she belonged to a great dignified church now. She said, she's dying with cancer. Went out to pray for her. Brother Roy Roberson here, one of the trustees sent me down there. And that poor little thing sitting there dying with cancer. And she said, I said, do you, are you a Christian? She said, sir, I, I don't know what to say. She said, I went to a certain church and said, and she started crying. I said, what's the matter? I said, I just couldn't dress right. So they looked down upon me. <laughs> Oh, well, there you are, see? You're, you're uncomfortable, see? But the Bible said that we are to assemble ourselves together in heavenly places. Amen. What? All the light. Well, I'll tell you what this will do. It'll make a it'll make a pair of overhauls and a tuxedo suit, put their arms around one and call each other brother. Amen. It'll make an old calico dress, put their arms around a silk sack when they say, Sister, how are you this morning? Praise God. That's right. It will. It's joy, peace, love, faith in the Word, long-suffering, gentleness, patience. Sit down in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Cool off a little while. See? That's what the leaves did. But what the old locusts did, he come around eating them leaves all said, You belong to ours or you don't belong to anybody. So it took all the coolness of the Spirit out. See, so he, he fixed himself a creed. All right. Now, we got to go on. We can stay a long time on that old locust. But the third stage of him was a canker worm. Mm, that's got a bad name to start with. The canker worm. What does a canker worm do? It goes into the bark. That's the lifeline there. Yes, sir. It goes into the bark. And it destroys the covering of the tree. The covering. What is religion? Covering. That's what the word religion means, a covering. So this little canker worm, after he got amongst the congregation, got them all dignified, then he took all the fellowship away from him in the form of the locust, and now he comes around and takes their very religion and makes dogmas out of it. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. Sets up unorthodox words. Forms himself a religion and gets a bunch of men together and put a creed down there. He takes that very religion, strips it off of God's tree. Oh, yeah. Very bark that bears the sap that comes up in it. Takes it away. Canker worm. Do you see that insect? It's exactly that canker worm. That was Rome in that early church. First thing that Pentecostals group, not Pentecostal organizations, no sir. Anything it organizes is dead. I'll prove that just in a minute for the scripture. Amen. But when it's a but the Pentecostal experience, who's it for? It's for the Catholic. Who else? The Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterian, anybody that wants it. Amen. But you won't got to want it. Amen. You don't join into it. I've been in the Brandon family for 53 years, and I don't have to join the family. Amen. Well, I'm a Brandon to begin with. Amen. I was born to Brandon. That's why we're Christians. Not because we're joined into something. That's an organization. We're born Christians by being regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Notice now. Now, this little canker worm began to bore itself into the bark. What did he do? He began to take its religion, its covering, its doctrine away from them. Religion is a doctrine, a covering. It covers anything. That's the reason our religion is by blood. The blood, the life is in the blood that covers the word. And the life is the, it's in the blood. The blood is religion and the life in the blood is what brings the results. Why? You see it? See? It's not covered by fig leaves. Adam and Eve tried that one time. Cain did the same thing. Did you notice that? Cain brought some of the botany life too. See, but it wouldn't work. It didn't work with Adam and Eve and it won't work today. When God refused it at the beginning, it's refused for eternity. Amen. Man-made creeds and thoughts will never take it. It's God's Word has to do it. And the Word is by the blood. The sacrifice of Christ. That's right. People, as brother said this morning, pulling splinters. Well, you know, there's 19 different nails in the nation today that different organizations are holding and could claim its original nail was in his hand. What happened if it was? I don't want nothing to do with it. Certainly. God never left anything for relics and tokens. He sent the Holy Ghost something alive. What would a nail do me any good? What would the original cross he hung on? What would it do me any good? 
Amen. Not of it. Yes. Not to know the nail, know the cross, but to know Him. Yes. 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 Now, so we're holding on nails, we're holding on relics, and we're holding on places. And today people walk up and down in the city of Jerusalem and, and all of them down in the different places and holding to relics and things. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Not a thing. And things condemned, rotten, and gone on. I went to a church in, in Rome. There were the, the, all these priests that died. They planted them in a garden of, down beneath there and let the meat fall off the bones. And, and then they take the bones out and make light fixtures and put their skulls around. And people come in there and rub them skulls to get blessings until their skulls are white and wore out. And as you go into St. Peter's Cathedral, there a foot of Peter. They claim there a statue has been kissed off nine or ten different times. Just mold another foot on it. <laughs> Such nonsense. Amen. Superstitions. Amen. That's all it is. Creeds of man-made doctrine. God sent the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Life of God to be in you. Yes. Not in a statue. Amen. You are the guy that God wants to live in. Not a statue. Amen. But in you. Hallelujah. People call holy statues. They are holy God. statues. You are God's holy statue. Yes. The Bible said so. Amen. That's right. Body has thou prepared me. Now, this little fellow started to destroy. Destroying what? The canker worm got into the bark. Watch what it did. It began to destroy the bark. What did it do? It made a natural church for a spiritual church. Yeah. Yes, sir. It took away the true and give it a false. Amen. Now, remember the leaf, the fruit, the palm worm eat. The leaf, the locust eat. Now, the bark, the covering. The religion, Amen. the doctrine, oh, my Lord, help. the doctrine, the canker worm God. Where did that first doctrine come from outside of the Bible? You historians. You know where it come from? From Rome. Amen. Exactly where it started. There they started accepting dogmas. That's how Irenaeus, St. Martin, Polycarp, all of them after John's death. For translating the word of God. It was out on the Isle of Patmos. It burned him in Greece for 24 hours. Brought back and he still wrote the Bible. God was determined that this Bible be written. That's the word of God. We can't take away from it or add to it. It's the way it is. The word. Notice when they got back. When these saints of God trying to hold up that word. Rome come right in and accepted dogmas instead. Now let's just see what she did. Some of her false doctrines. Watch out. Water baptism. Where they were commissioned. Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Of the word of God. Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. Amen. What did Rome do with it? Turned it around and said be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Make it a creed, not a doctrine of the Bible. What did he do? That's a canker worm eating. Amen. Sprinkling instead of immersing. In the name of Father. Father, Son, Holy Ghost is no name. There's no such a thing. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. And Holy Ghost is not a name. When Jesus said baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly what Amen. Peter and them did. And all, everybody in the Bible was there. Amen. There was nobody. I challenge anyone to bring me one piece of scripture or one piece of history Amen. where anybody was ever baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus Christ until the Roman Catholic Church. That's right. Amen. Amen. Do that. And remember, this tape goes around the world. Yeah, I've helped congregation ministers with hundreds of them, and bishops and everything say, Stand to your feet or come here with your Bible. Or hold your peace forever. Amen. Amen. They hold their peace. <laughs> so they get around behind you and then they start Amen. talking about you. Not the very audacity to stand to your face. Common decency to stand and tell you to your face. They're afraid to do it. They know it's wrong. But that's what that canker worm started eating. See, eating away that real thing. Now you say it's not essential. Anyway, I'm baptized is all right. Is it? Paul said in Acts 19, when he passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, the Bible said he found certain disciples and followers. Apollos, a Baptist preacher, under John the Baptist, was teaching them the word. And they were having great joy. And Paul went over to see them. And he said, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe?" Well, they say, I'm a believer, but that's not what I'm asking. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? 
They said, we don't know where it be any Holy Ghost. He said, then uh, what was you baptized? Yeah. In other words, how was you baptized? They said, we've been baptized. I said, how? He said, under John. He said, the same man that baptized Jesus, wouldn't that be all right? Paul said, no. Not now. No. He said, you've got to be baptized over again. And Paul baptized them over again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, laid his hands upon them, and the Holy Ghost came on them. And Paul said, if an angel from heaven, let alone some preacher, if an angel, let alone this canker worm, if an angel from heaven preaches anything else than this to you, let him be accursed. That's right. So you see what what the canker worm got to eaten. Amen. It eat away the baptism of uh, water in the name of Jesus Christ. The next thing that the canker worm did, it taken away the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because as long as you're going to have that Holy Ghost, it's going to shed light on that word. Amen. As long as you do that. So they had to, to do it different. Now I just think of how many Lutherans, Protestants, how many Catholics this morning was confirmed, what they call it, taken First Communion. And they call that Holy Eucharist. Which means in Latin word, Holy Ghost. My God. Did you ever see a Catholic pass by the church and yeah. go over yourself like that? Why? It's God in that church. What is God? That little piece of bread. Yeah. That little piece of bread. Round, made like the sun, God that they worship. Laying on the altar where the mice and roaches pack around overnight. That's not my God. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> First communion. Confirmed to the church. Nonsense. Amen. But that's what they did. That's what the canker worm did. It took away the spirit and give them a piece of bread. Amen. 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 Some bread that some priest made or some nun or something. That's what they did. That's exactly right. Go ask now. Go looking back in history and see if it isn't right. Amen. And you let that thing be shoved down your throat. Not only them Catholics, but you Protestants. Amen. Amen. Same thing. All right. That's what they did. All right. And then the Protestant, instead of having the Holy Ghost, you know what they do? They come and join. Right. Shake a hand. Yeah. There wasn't a somebody come up the road and shuck a hand on the day of Pentecost come. No. But there came from heaven yeah. a sound of a rushing mighty wind Amen. that filled all the house where they were Amen. sitting. That's right. Come down through them leaves on the trees. <laughs> Pour over the bar. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now, now, instead of the new birth, that Jesus said a man must be born again. They adopted joining the church. Yeah. Come and join. Uh, yeah. and instead of the word, the canker word, give him a creed. Amen. Don't you see? Look here what he's doing. He's giving a natural for a spiritual. Amen. Amen. Can you see it? Yes. Now look, now we, we're, we're on the Catholic line here. But did you know that come right down to the Protestants too? Where do we have the Holy Ghost demonstrations in Protestant churches today? Amen. Where do we have a Pentecostal reaction in amongst Protestants? We don't have, you have it in Luther? No. Uh, if you do, I won't go to it. I'll go there and just eat and have a wonderful time. Amen. Presbyterian? Where, where, is, where is it at? See, you've adopted something natural. Amen. I'm fixing to leave. You know that. See? Mm-hmm. Don't you never let this get out of your heart. Don't take the natural, that's death. This natural man is death. Anything he does is death. It's subject and here for death. It's the spirit that maketh alive. The spirit that gives life quickens it. It's a spirit. So you see, they took, watch what they done, took the water baptism from Jesus Christ. The Father, Son, Holy Ghost, a title, which is no name at all. Now you say, what difference does it make? All right. Now if you're going to give, um, uh, somebody's going to give you your paycheck Saturday, the, the, um, the man that pays you, instead of putting his name on there, just say from, um, from uh, uh, the uh, boss. <laughs> That's funny. Your paycheck, yes, uh, pay to the order of John Doe, uh, $150 for this week's work from the boss. Put it down the bank and see how it bounces back. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Sure, well, sure. If it don't make a difference, why did Paul command them Christians praising God and having a lot of joy and having the great things going on? Why he come? You got to come back and be baptized over again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Take the word, say just stay with it. Don't say nothing different. Just say what it says. That's what we're going to be judged by. Now look, that's what they did. 
Instead of the new birth, they have a joining. Instead of talking the word, they have a creed. Show me in the Bible where they ever said a Hail Mary. Oh. Show me in the Bible where you have Protestants ever quoted Apostles' Creed. Tell me what the Apostles' Creed is in the Bible. Amen. Communion of saints is against it. Amen. Tell me in the Bible where they ever had Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. It's not there. Amen. And yet you go for it. Amen. Now, now, instead of fellowship and brotherhood, Amongst brothers, they give them a hierarchy. Amen. Pope. Amen. And you got a bishop. Amen. Tells you what you can do and what you can't. And you Pentecostals has got a district presbyter that tells you who you can do. But the church has Christ. That's where you come. See, they give you those dogmas and man-made things and still take it away. What's that canker worm done? Take it right off a tree and give you this. Amen. I'll run that off a tree and I'll give you this instead. I'll take that off and give you this. See where you got to? You say, well, Brother Bram, where did everyone, where did every Protestant church come from? Catholic. That's, right. That's what right. Revelation 13, uh, Revelation 17 said she was. Said she was a whore and she was a mother of harlots. Right. Same yeah. thing. So don't pot key call kittle black, you know. So don't that's just don't do it. So that's right. Brotherhood, tuck away brotherhood. When we ought to be brothers one with another. Amen. Segregated us and made us different. All right. Now watch, here's a good one. I'll get this and then I'll stop on these others. Look. The Bible tells us when we've done wrong that we should purge our souls by the Holy Spirit. Get down. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to us that you're doing wrong. And there stay before Him till you die out. Amen. Purging our souls. Yes. Now they turn around and give you a purgatory. <laughs> After you're dead, then the priest makes a lot of money to pray you out of purgatory. <laughs> What's well, nonsense? Amen. That's what the canker worm done. Amen. Sure. Pray out of purgatory. Cost so many hundred dollars to get this soul prayed out of purgatory. I want you to even find purgatory in the Bible. Amen. And it's thing like it. There's no such a thing in the Bible. Amen. No, sir. Amen. But they give them a purgatory. See? They, after you're dead. Oh, yes, I know. They, they, they say, sure. You hear them say, well, St. Boniface said so-and-so. I don't care what St. Boniface said. Amen. Well, didn't Amen. so-and-so say to her, she prayed for her husband, that great sister Saint so-and-so. I don't care what she did. It's unauthoritative word. Amen. It's against the authoritative apostles. Amen. God give those apostles to set the church in order. Amen. And it's built upon the doctrine of the apostles. Amen. Amen. It's contrary to the word. I don't care what Saint Boniface said and what other saints and other saints and Saint Susie and Saint Maria and all those said. It's nonsense. It's no more than any other lie. It's contrary to God's word. It's a lie. I don't believe on authoritarian words. That's the reason I don't believe these Protestant creeds and things. It's Catholic to the, to the core. Amen. It's dogmas. How can you call Catholics and make fun of them having dogmas when you're full of it yourself? Amen. Not so much here, but this is on tape, you understand. Yes, <laughs> it goes all over the world. Amen. Notice, how can you call them wrong when you take man-made creeds that's contrary to the Bible? Dogma. Just the same as did. Why? You're in an organization that's a daughter to the old prostitute. Amen. What is a prostitute? Some woman that lives untrue to her husband. Amen. Claiming to be a Christian church and giving out wrong doctrine. Her own stuff. Amen. Instead of taking God's holy word. Just like Eve did. Listen to, to the devil and cause all death and sorrow that ever struck the earth. Come through Eve because she committed a spiritual fornication against God Amen. by disbelieving His Word. And that's exactly what the churches are doing today, committing spiritual fornications against God's Word. And they won't even have in the church if you don't agree with their doctrine. Well, they sign me letters. If you'll believe in this and if you'll say this is right, and you'll, I said, I just won't come. Amen. No, sir. I'll preach just what this Bible says or not at all. See? Amen. Stay on that word. That's what we got to do, brethren. Amen. Stay there. Now we're getting down to the last days, and we know that. Amen. The hour is sure. How we can say, oh, they say this, that, and the other, but anything that's unauthoritative, don't believe it. Amen. I don't care who said it. 
if anybody here a sister come to me not long ago and said um, a certain group of men and I preached to you ministers about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ were 300 and something ministers plenty of people sitting here at the meeting where the whole council of the Chicago Ministerial Association met me the Lord gave me a vision told me where they'd be and what would happen Amen. and I turned right up and told me we got the tape here if you want to hear it see Amen. And I, all the bishops and doctors and cardinals and all of them said, I said, any of you that can condemn it, get your Bible and come here. I said, what's you so quiet about? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Nobody said that. Why? You're afraid of that word. Amen. I said, then if you can't, why are you picking on me? Hold your peace. Get out. Do something. Amen. Amen. And if you can't back it up with the word, then keep still. So then that same group of men sent a lady down and said, Brother Bram, if the angel of the Lord told you, the angel of the Lord, you know, his picture is there, you see. If the angel of the Lord told you that, well, we'll believe it. I said, anybody that, a ministerial group that would be that weak. If the angel of the Lord said, if that angel said something contrary to this word, it wouldn't be the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord will vindicate the word. It's exactly what he's always done through every age. He still does the same thing. He stays with the word. And any minister anointed with the Holy Ghost will stay by the same word. Because the Bible said that the entire Bible was wrote by the Holy Ghost. Now how can you have the Holy Ghost and deny what the Bible says? The very spirit in you. There is record that it's not The canker worm's been eaten. That's all. Mm-hmm. Eating away the true things of God. Yes, sir. Unauthoritative word. It's contrary to the doctrine of the apostles. Oh, my. This is the apostolic doctrine. This is the Bible. This is the Holy Spirit. Every word in it's true. You just believe it and accept it and don't take down it and watch every promise be fulfilled. The manifestation of God present right now. Hallelujah. If he isn't just as much God now as he was when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, he wouldn't be God. He is the same God that fell on Pentecost. And he is right here today. He isn't the same God that there was no resurrection. Amen. If he was, if, what good does a historical God do to you if he isn't the same God today? Amen. What good does it do to send preachers to the seminaries and hatch them out like incubator or chickens and go around like that if there is no such a thing as God? Amen. What do you do to take away the Word of God? Where's your authority at? You say the church. The church is 969 different organizations of them. Amen. Which one of them is right? No one to know what to do. You'd be confused. That's right, but God ain't going to judge the people by the church. He's going to judge them by Christ, and Christ Amen. is the Word. Amen. The Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and blood in us. He judged the church and the people by the Word. Amen. That's right, the living, resurrected Word. And if that living, resurrected Word says anything contrary to this Word here, then it's not the risen, resurrected Word, because... This, he will bear witness of this truth. He can't say something here and something else over here. I can say something here and something over there because I'm a man. You can too. You can get more knowledge and understanding, but not God. He's infinite. But yes, the first decision, his first thing he says has to stand eternally. It's the same. He cannot say one thing here and something over here. He's got to say the same thing every time in order to be God. So if the Spirit is on you as of God, it'll witness this words of truth every word of it. Amen. And if it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. Now, let's hurry and get to the next stage of this little bug. First, he was a polymer worm. What did he eat off of God's tree? Fruit. The next stage he come in, he died in that stage and come in another stage. What did he do now? He come in this time as a locust. He eat all the leaves off. That's the locust habit. Now what's the next thing he done? He come back in another stage as a canker worm and he went into the bark. Now here he comes as a, lo- as a caterpillar. The fourth stage of him. Now as a caterpillar. What is a caterpillar? He's a sucker. Amen. Sucks the life. Amen. The spirit. The life. That's what he does. Gets right down hold of pulp and goes to suck it. Caterpillar. Here he is. Who are we going to call him? Denomination. Amen. That's that guy's right name. Amen. Why? He's a destroyer. Amen. Sucks the life. Every time that God sends a move among his people. Every time. And they denominate. Right there they die. Amen. I want somebody 
that knows the history of the church that can condemn that. Show me one time that an organization ever organized that it didn't die right there. The canker worm got a hold of it, took its religion away, and then the sucker come along and took the suck the life right out of the tree. What kind of life is it? Holy Spirit. What did it do? It couldn't hold the Holy Spirit in there and then still have dogmas. The Holy Spirit wouldn't stand for it. So it takes the holy the life out of the tree and gives it a dogma. Makes a denomination. We don't care what this says. Our denomination says this. There you are. Remember, after it denominates, it always dies. Amen. And never rises again. The first organization was the Catholic. Died immediately. Of course, it was dogma to begin with. Out of there, come the first reformation was Luther. Organized and died. Next come Wesley. Organized. Died. Next come Pentecost. Organized and died. Presbyterian, Luther, and all these others, and the and the Nazarene Pilgrim Holiness, and all these organizations that followed along like that, everyone died. Right. Look at them. Why? They organize and that kills them. What do they do? They take in these dogmas. You Nazarenes, a wonderful the next church to the, the coming up of Pentecost. What was it? You believe in sanctification. But when it come down to the gifts of the Spirit, speaking in tongues and the great powers of God, you call the devils, and there you die. Amen. Right. Where's she at today? Dead! Oh, she's got more members, but where is she? <laughs> she's a corpse. I seen her the other night. <laughs> right. The whole thing, her pastor laying on top, kissing a corpse, making love to it. Said they ain't got no more time anyhow. This is all of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll get it to you sometime on tape. And see. All right. God planted His tree to bear spiritual fruit. Fruits of the Spirit. Is that right? But what did man? Man always tried to make it an artificial form. He did back there. He does now. Now that's that's fire hard now and quick. Man has always tried to take the spiritual church and make it an artificial form. Luther had a spiritual church. What happened? As soon as Luther died, they made it a farm. Artificial. What did Wesley do? John Wesley? A great man of God. Who would say John Wesley wasn't a man of God? What do you do? As soon as him and John and Charles died, they organized it. Yeah. And she did, she died. Exactly. Same thing down through the age every time on everyone. They make artificial, put on good works, biggest congregation, smartest people. The celebrity of the city wants to join us. That's exactly what's happening to you bunch of Pentecostals too. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. You, you let down the bars. You got away from the spirit. You wanted big buildings and finery and everything like that. And you got dignified pastors. What'd you do, you mothers? Sent your boys away to some of these seminaries out here to become pastors. Why'd they go to teach them theology and all kind of man-made stuff? And where is it today? They come back a bunch of Rickies and Elvises. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. What have you got today? A bunch of Tommy Rock. Amen. Form of godliness. The Bible said in the last days they'd have a form of godliness but would deny the power thereof, the life thereof. Wow! The caterpillar sucked it out. Amen. 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 The organization taking it away. First Timothy 3. Paul said, Know this in the last days, the peerless times shall come. Man will be lovers of their own selves, proud, bolsters, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, incontinent, despisers of those that are good, traitor, high-minded, having a form of godliness and would deny the power thereof. Yeah. Caterpillar sucked it out. Yeah. Canker worm got on to it a long time ago. We're going to bring that tree down the hole just in a little bit, the Lord willing. The largest place. Oh, sure. Well, you know, our church last year accumulated so much. Oh, sure. Catholic beat you by a million miles. Mm-hmm. Sure it did. It even got so much in Russia till they run it out and put established communism. They did the same thing in Mexico and they ought to do it all over the world. <laughs> Where she's at. That's right. Don't you never fear communism. Communism is a godless move. But you hear some of these preachers stand up pulpit condemning communism, communism. I don't believe in it either. But don't you tell the church, oh, we're all going to be swallowed up. whole world's going to become communist. That's exactly contrary to God's word. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's no place the Bible says that that'll be that way. But the Bible says that Romanism, the Catholic Church will say Take Daniel and find out the head of gold, King Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian king, Medes and Persia succeeded him. The Grecian Empire succeeded that. And Rome 
went to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Ten toes running every kingdom under the earth. Don't you? There's an iron curtain. There's a bamboo curtain. There's a purple curtain. Yeah. Brother, don't you fear the rest of them? But watch that purple curtain. Amen. Yeah. She's sitting right here on the throne today in this country. <laughs> Remember, just like Ahab did Jezebel behind him. That's, the Bible calls the Catholic Church Jezebel. Amen. Prostitute. And Ahab was no bad guy. I don't say Mr. Kennedy isn't a nice man. I don't know nothing about him. He's a man. That's all I know. He's a president. I believe he'll make a good president. And it's not him. It's that system behind him. Amen. Wait till she gets wormed into the cabinet everywhere she can. Then watch what happens. Look what it's done in other nations. Look what it's always done. Amen. Amen. You know what the Bible says in Revelation 13? This nation's number 13. Yeah. It's got 13 stripes and uh, 13 stars in the flag, 13 stripes in the flag, 13 everything in it's 13. Amen. 13 colonies, 13 everything, and it's down in the 13th chapter of Revelation. And the Bible says it should come up like a little lamb, freedom of religion. Two little horns, civil and ecclesiastical. And after a while, they united and he spoke like the dragon did and done everything the dragon did before him. And the Bible said they made an image unto the beast, the confederation of church. Just what they got in right now here in New York City. And there are the great big morgue up there and all you Methodists, Baptists, and Pentecostals and every one of you economic, economic people out here trying to do such things as that and selling out your birthrights to join that bunch of Babylon? What's the matter with you? Amen. Amen. Setting your birthrights like Esau did for a mess of pottage, that's all you're going to get. That's all. Form an image of the beast. Exactly. Don't you fear communism. You fear Catholicism. Oh, he said it would come in with flatteries like a lamb. But so watch it behind it, it's a wolf. It's a sneaker. You watch it. Yes, sir. Of course, it's contrary to the Word. What the Word says has to come to pass. Amen. Communism ain't doing nothing but playing in the hands of God. Amen. Exactly. And why do they have to do that? God had to permit communism so that to make these His Word come to pass. Amen. Sure. That's, did you realize that? Did you ever think of that? God has to make His Word come to pass. Look where there's 400 prophets stood out there before uh, for, um, Ahab. And Jehoshaphat one day. Jehoshaphat is a righteous man. He said, well, before we go up to Ramoth Gilead, he said, oughtn't we to, to consult the Lord? Ahab said, yes, sure. See, Jezebel behind it all. And he said, we'll, uh, we'll, i got 400 prophets here. We'll bring them up. All fine people brought them up. They all prophesied. said, go on up. Lord's with you. Yeah. That didn't sound right to this godly man, the king of Israel, or the king of Israel. Up there. It didn't sound very right to him. He said, isn't there another one? 400 preachers already in one accord saying, go up, the Lord's done spoke to us and said, go on up. He said, but uh, there ought to be another one somewhere. <laughs> he said, I got one, but I hate him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He said, he's always bawling me out. He's always saying evil against me. How could he do anything else when the word of God was against him? So they sent and got Micah. Micah said, go on up. Yes, that's right. But I seen Israel scattered like sheep having no shepherd. <laughs> And then he, that big preacher walked over to the bishop and smacked him in the mouth. He said, where did the Spirit of God go when it went out of me? I mean, he said, it wasn't in to begin with. So then, so then he said, you'll find out one of these days. He said, he said, he said Ahab said, put him back in the inner prison. Feed him the bread of sorrow and, a, and the water of sorrow. He said, when I return in peace, I'll deal with this fellow. He said, if you return at all, then the Word of God hasn't spoke to me. Amen. Wow! Why? He was right with the Word. Right with the Word. Any prophecy, don't stay with that Word. That's exactly that's the reason I say today, no matter how good it looks, Amen. how many preachers are saying this, that, or the other, communism's going to take the world and throw it down. Don't you never try to fight communism. Fight Romanism! Amen. Well, that's thus saith the Lord. Amen. The Lord said Romanism is going to rule. Amen. Not communism. It's just a puppet. But you see, he had to do that. The Lord told Micah, I've got to send Ahab out there. Have them preachers to say that. To send Ahab out there in order to make Elijah's words come to pass. God had to let communism raise up. What did it do? They didn't run all these years morgues together and made a confederation of churches Amen. to join up to make an image of the beast just what his word said would take place. Amen. Don't you worry about that. You watch the thing it's forming under. That's right. Mm. 
Amen. I guess I'm wearing you out. But no. 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 But that's true. I don't know why I speak to you again. I may never. We don't know. We may never meet again. But I want you to know what's truth. Yes. What's this word is the truth. Not me. This word. Amen. This is it. My word's contrary to this. And don't you believe me. You believe that. Amen. Then if you say, well, we got that. And you're preaching contrary to it. Then it's your duty to come to me. That's right. right. It's your duty right. to come to me. Amen. It's come. And let's see what's the word. Right. Now. Now. Therefore, we find out that it was it's communism is gathered together. God said Gog and Magog there will gather together, sure, to bring about the battle. That's exactly true. Of course, it's going to bring these forces together. It has to come. The Bible said it would. God planted this tree to bear spiritual fruit, and man has always tried to make it an artificial farm, having a form of God. In it. The largest buildings in the city, sure, millions of dollars. My goodness, and people preaching Jesus is coming and spend six and eight million dollars on a building somewhere. And missionaries, I know missionaries on the field. That's right. That's preaching the gospel without a pair of shoes on. That's right. Eating two meals a week. My God. Can you see why, brother, we what's the matter with people? I don't actually believe they believe but he's coming. Your your your, your words speak uh, well your your life speaks louder than your words. You, see? He's, I'm a little missionary's where I come up in my meeting like that, no shoes on, a little pair of pants tied around him like that, living out there with fleas and amoeba and bugs and all kinds of sickness and everything else out there. Little old hands eat up and eat up with amoeba and everything else down there. Say, so you brother Brennan, I said, oh, bless you. I always pray for you. I thought, oh, God, let that man pray for me. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. I, I, I read your articles, Brother Brandon. You sure tell the truth. We're right with you. Oh, brother, that's that's the boy. That's him. Poor little guy. Here's somebody say, you know who that is? Oh, I said, he don't belong to our organization. That's who is he? Well, he ain't with us. Well, who is he? Oh, he's he's an independent. Oh, he is. Uh huh. Well, what does he do? Oh, he's got a little work out there. He he won't join him with us. Well, I want to know about him. Uh, you know, when I was a little boy hunting apples in an apple orchard, I always found the tree had all the clubs under. You know, got club right good in the heart. That's where the good apples was. They say, well, he's just a holy roller. You know, you always put the scarecrow where the good trees at. The devil does the same thing. Scare you off of it. Don't you worry. Go right on in behind that scare I was watching a groundhog one day eat butter beans I was planting. Every time I plant a roll of butter beans, that little guy come out and eat them up. Oh, I was scared the life out of him. So I got me a paper sack, and I'm really an artist. You ought to see me. I draw what I thought was a scary picture. Oh, it was scary to you, but I draw it. And I put it on a sack and put me some butter beans in it and hung it on a stick. And when the wind would blow, it would shake like that. Out of the hole come a little groundhog, you know, you're running down through there, he's eating butter beans, and you're running up against his sack. He backed off and looked at it, looked her over like that, and he went, jumped at it, and, oh, sack stood still. He looked at it again, you know, looked it all over again, he looked back and seen them butter beans went on down the row, and they were good, you know, so he looked that scarecrow in his way. So he walked up and kept getting a little closer like that, trying to scare it, and it wouldn't move. <laughs> Don't worry, it's dead. <laughs> That's all them scarecrows are. So, <laughs> so it just, um, what he done, he took his little foot and hit that sack and went rattle, rattle. He jumped back and looked at it like that. He hit it again, rattle, rattle. <laughs> That's all it is, just a rattle. Like the Irishman's out all fuss and feathers and know how. You know? <laughs> he hit it like that and rattled four or five times like that. You know what he done? Went right around behind the sack and went eat my butter. <laughs> 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 no more about good than I did. <laughs> what was it? You see, he wasn't letting Scarecrow stop him. There's something good behind the Scarecrow. <laughs> when they pay all their holy rollers, just go out around behind that scare and go on in. See? Go on in see? Might be some Holy Spirit there too, you see. You can't tell. All right. Oh, that, the, let's look at this denominational caterpillar at work. Church natural, church spiritual. Watch this old caterpillar now when he denominates it. It already got the bark, eat off the fruits, eat off of it. Oh, brother, it's all gone. All the gifts of the Spirit's gone. No divine healing, no speaking in tongues, no prophecy, no nothing. Don't believe in being prophets. They don't believe in uh, these things. They don't know. All man made everything that God's man made artificial. See? All right. <clears throat> The church natural. There is a church natural. That's one's made up of man. Church spiritual. You know the Bible says that? Amen. Yes, sir. Church natural, church spiritual. And the Bible says, cast out the bondswoman and her child, Hagar, for she will not be heir with the free woman and her child. See? So the natural church that's going to inherit what? The binding of the sheaves, the binding of the bundles. 
to be burned, and she will not inherit, be heir with the free woman. If the bondwoman is in bondage with her organization children, she will not be heir with the free woman because the free woman's children is going in the rapture. Amen. And the bondwoman's children is going to stand in the judgment. Amen. Cast out the yeah, spirit. Yes, sir. The caterpillar denomination on Esau's. Now Esau, as Esau and Jacob, both of them twins, both of them religious. Esau was a carnal man. He was a good man. He didn't say, well, he didn't go out and steal, drink, or anything. He's a religious man. But he thought, well, as long as I'm religious, what difference does it make? But little old Jacob, he didn't care how he had to get it. That birthright is what he wanted. No matter how he got it, just so he got it. Amen. If he had to get up the altar and scream and cry and boo-hoo and snot, excuse me, or, you know, uh, get right up in his eyes. I didn't even mean to say that. And so, uh, excuse me, so get out the altar and cry through until he got it. Why, he got it, see? He didn't care how he got it, just so he got it. Some of them says, I, I better damn, that people down there boo-hooing on that altar and crying and crying. I don't want it that way. Well, you won't get it. Amen. Amen. The old darky colored brother down in the south one time was always happy. And his boss said, what, what makes you so happy all the time? Boy, he said, I got heartfelt religion. He said, there is no such a thing. He said, he made one mistake. As far as you know, there's no such a thing. He told me. He said, as far as you know, you should have said that way. One day he said, I want to get some of that heartfelt religion. He said, when do you want it? He said, now. I said, well, let's go get it. He went out and said, here's a halo. If it's nice. He said, that my wife won't hear me anything out here. He said, that's the way people want it. You know, hand it to him on a platter. He yeah. said, we'll kneel down here. The old brother said, you don't get it here. <laughs> well, so he went out to the stall. He said, well, we get it here. He said, no. He said, we go up to car and crib. He said, no. He said, where do you get it? He said, follow me. He pulled up his pants legs, walked out in the pig pen as hard as he could in the mud. He said, come out here. Here's where you get it. He said, I don't want to come out there. He said, you don't want it yet. I said, <laughs> You know, Naaman thought that too. Yeah. Naaman. Naaman said, now I want to get rid of my leprosy. Elijah said, you go down there to the muddy jar where she enters into the metering in there. said, she's muddy as it can be. Dipped down there seven times. Oh, Naaman said, my goodness, aren't the waters better up around Damascus and up there? Ooh, they're pretty clear up there. My, we see here tonight on the film here. You know, said, oh, said, why, why we don't want to go down there? I can't go down there. I know who I am. I'm the captain of the guard. I'm the general of the host. Well, if you want to get rid of your leprosy, go on down there. But if you want to keep it going up there. He said dip, and I can see him walking out in that water. Could you imagine? Oh, that hurt his prestige. Yeah. I can see him, you know, tiptoeing out like his nose hole. You know. <laughs> That's the way some people try to come to Christ. I'd like to get healed. I'd like to even go to heaven, but oh my. What a rest up to look like. <laughs> Oh, you hypocrite, you'll never get it anyhow. So. You never get it anyhow. Don't worry, you don't want it enough yet. That's right. You don't want it enough. That's exactly when you're ready to get it, you'll get it all right. God will give it to you when you're ready. All right. Now, are the denomination of caterpillars eating up all things? Notice each insect, each one of these insects. When he was working on the tree, he made a way for the other one that was going to follow him. Yeah. Oh, he's a smart guy. Yes, sir. See, he took away the fruits, see, the spirit, so what? He could take the fellowship away. See, the leaves. So the other side come along and he made his own living, took the leaves off. Why did he do that? He took the leaves off so there'd be no coolness and freshness that other people could see so he could get into the bark. See, they get into the bark and bore into the religion, take the doctrine away from them. See, the very thing that supports the life. And then as soon as he got holes bored in that, he had the next color come along, the old sucker caterpillar that stuck the denomination, sucked it up and organized it so you can't get it. And what did the life do? Go right down into the roots. That's exactly right. Run it right down into the roots. All right. Now, the same insect bored to the heart till it got to the life. It kept coming through the fruit. To the leaves, to the bark, until it got right to the heart, the lifeline. All right. Now let's look at the um, destroyer at work. The first, I'm going to have to skip some of this here, I believe. No, I mean. Amen. The, the first thing this fella did, as soon as he got into the heart of the tree, let's watch him back in his first stage before he ever got started too good. Let's watch him. Now let's watch him at work. The first thing that he could do was to destroy the first real precious fruit tree that God had on earth. 
Now, if you can bear with me just a few more minutes, I want, you, I want you to get this now. Don't. This is your Easter message coming right now. The first thing that he did, he destroyed God's first precious fruit tree, Christ. Amen. He was that tree from the Garden of Eden. Amen. That's right. The first fruit tree, he destroyed it. First one God planted here on earth was Christ. He destroyed that tree that was bearing his fruit. Yes. Now they had all kind of organizations and he just had that in his hands. But when he come to a tree that bore the actual fruit, that Roman bug got in there. Yeah. Right. Destroyed the tree. The tree, yes. Jesus said, if I do, in St. John, if I do not the works of my father or have not the fruits of my father, don't believe me. He was bearing the fruit of God. Amen. What kind of a fruit did he bear? What kind of fruit? Let's watch him for a few minutes. We went through it many times. Let's just take a little preliminary one for the people that's sitting here waiting for a minute to be prayed for. What was the first thing they know that he wouldn't recognize him to be the Messiah? When Peter first came to him and Andrew had brought him and he looked at Peter and said, Your name is Simon and you are the son of Jonas. He knew right then, according to the Scripture, that that was the Messiah. Amen. Been, did you know there had been many raised up before that, according to history, and called themselves yeah. Messiahs? Amen. But none of them could do this. Amen. Because the Messiah, Moses, said the word of God, which cannot fail, was spoke by Moses. He said, your Messiah will be a prophet like me. Amen. And so when this stranger walked up before Jesus, and Jesus said, behold, your name is Simon, and you're the son of Jonas. Peter still right in who he was. Amen. He knew that was him. When Nathaniel went and got Philip, or Philip went and got Nathaniel rather, and brought him over there, and Nathaniel, a great man, see, great man, religious man, and and Philip tell him about on the road over what he had done to Simon. And when Nathaniel walked up in the presence of Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, "Behold, an Israelite in whom there's no God." He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, Rabbi, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. See, why? That's a fruit. If I do not the works of my Father. He knew the very thoughts that was in their hearts. A woman touched his garment one time and went off and sat down in the congregation. Jesus looked around and said, who touched me? All of them denied it. He looked around and saw her. She had a blood issue and he said, Your faith has saved you. Amen. Oh, uh, the little Samaritan woman. Now, I remember he never went to the Gentiles like that. No, sir. He told his disciples not to go to him. That's us. This is our day. He went in the form of the Holy Spirit to us as he said he would be. But when he went to the, them, what happened? When he went to the Samaritan woman, the woman said, he said to her, yeah, bring me a drink. And she said, it's not customary for you being a Jew to ask me a Samaritan. It had segregation by their colors and so forth. He let them know right then, there were no difference. They all come off the same tree. Amen. We're all sons and daughters of God. We're all... See? And he said, uh, she said, well, we worship our father, Jacob. See, and that was a Jew's father too. <laughs> See, our father, Jacob, dug this well and you say you're greater than he... And he said, the waters that I give you is everlasting life. See? He said, well, well, we worship in this mountain and you in Jerusalem. He said, go get your husband and come here. This will settle it. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, you said right. He said, you've had five. And the one you got now is not your husband. She said, sir. You know, it's been 400 years since we had a prophet. But you must be a prophet. How did you know that I had five husbands? She said, now we know that the, it's time for the Messiah to be here. Which is called the Christ. And when He comes, He'll tell us these kind of things. Oh, there's His fruit. He said, I'm He. She left the pot. The old water pot of organization. <laughs> Into the city she went. No matter how much... Well, Jacob had. She found a new spring. <laughs> Into the city she went and said, Come see a man who told me the thing I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Isn't this the fruit? Isn't this the evidence? And that is the Messiah. The Jews couldn't understand it. They said, He's a fortune teller. Beelzebub. 
Jesus said, I forgive you. You. But sometimes the Holy Ghost is coming to do the same thing and you speak against that, it'll never be forgiven. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, if I do not the works of my Father, believe, don't believe me. But that fruit tree was bearing the fruit. Now what? What did he say? Did, what, what kind of a church did he set up? Now you Catholics won't say Jesus set up a church. What kind of church did he set up? Did he ever mention a denomination? No. A creed? No. He's always against it. Amen. Said you white walls, <laughs> you dead man's bones. <laughs> he called him everything that he could call him. Amen. That's right. Amen. He was against it. Amen. That was the fruit of God. Amen. Now you can make two and two four if you want to. Amen. All right. He was against the thing. Organization. Against the theories. Call them hypocrites, snakes in the grass. He said they were devils. He said, you are your father the devil. And his works you'll do. Which one of your fathers didn't persecute the prophets I sent before it? He said, then you build their tomb. He said, you're the ones put them in there. Oh, brother, he didn't pull no punches with them. Right. That was the fruit of God. Amen. What would it stay with the Word of God? Amen. Make the Word of God manifest. He said, otherwise, what did the Scripture say I, the Messiah, would do when I come? Now, if I don't bear that fruit of that Word, then I'm not the Messiah. Right. But if I bear the fruit of that Word that the Messiah was supposed to do, then I am Him. Amen. 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 Now, which one of you can condemn me as sin, he said? Yeah. There you are. Which one of your organizations does this same thing? There you are. The Messiah was supposed to do this. The Messiah was supposed to be a prophet. Now, let's see some of you all, he said. With all your high, confluting ideas, let's see you do it. Now, they were silent. All right. What was it? He bore the fruit of God. The Holy Spirit was in him. He bore God's fruit. What was he? he now, listen close. I'll hurry as quick as I can, so I won't delay you for your Easter dinner. Look, but your your Easter dinner should be the resurrection. Amen. 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 He was God's Amen. perfect prophet tree. Amen. The example tree. The bridegroom tree. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. Amen. Go to say something, Reverend. <laughs> If He is the bridegroom tree, do you believe that? Amen. From the Garden of Eden? Amen. Amen. Then the bridegroom tree without the female don't bear fruit. Amen. So He's got to have a bride tree. Amen. She's got to be born of the same material. Amen. The Word. Amen. Made flesh in the tree. the same life in this female tree the bridegroom as it is in the bride the works that I do shall you also is that right he was the bridegroom remember you say that ain't scriptural oh it is I caught that see we're fixing to have a healing meeting in a minute I caught that he was you want proof of it he said I am the vine you are the branches St. John's I am the vine you are the branches you bear the fruit See, and the male tree and the female tree produces a pollen one to the other brings the fruit. Amen. And the branch and the vine does the same thing. Amen. See, that's exactly right. So he said, now, this first tree was a prophet tree. A perfect tree. The God of the prophets. He was a major tree. He was God's perfect prophet tree. Uh, prophetry. Wow! He was the Word. Amen. Now the others was minor prophets. The Word came to the prophets, but He was the Word Himself in form of a prophet. Amen. 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 Now we're getting somewhere. Amen. Now listen real close. Don't miss this now. It was so good that I just wrote it out. Then. Amen. Amen. Somebody shouting out and make the horn shout. <laughs> yes. Oh, I hope you're having a good time out there. Amen. All right. All right. Now, he was God's prophet tree. Why? He preached all the perfect Word of God. For he was the Word of God made manifest. He was the perfect prophet tree that preached the perfect prophet Word that brought forth the perfect prophet fruit by the perfect Word of God. <laughs> Oh, brother. Talk about a tree. Amen. A tree. 
He was that life tree Amen. that the angel kept even Adam away from Amen. with the guarding cherubims away from that tree. Now, the same cherubims is trying to run him into it because there's been a way made for him. Amen. Now they're pulling back. <laughs> oh, human beings. <laughs> now, preached all the word. He didn't cut the ear there. When Satan come to him, that great theologian, and said, it is written. Jesus said, yes, and it's also written. <laughs> but it's written, he said, and it's also written. <laughs> perfect prophet tree, preaching perfect prophet's word with perfect prophet signs, perfect prophet results, Amen. perfect fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And for a mockery, I'm going to go through this pretty fast now, because for a mockery, they hanged him on, he was the word, you know, they hanged him, the word tree, the word tree, hung him on a man-made Roman tree. Amen. Amen. Mm. Brother, I hope that got home. He would be God's perfect spiritual tree. They hung him on a man-made Roman tree. Amen. Amen. Say now. <laughs> They're trying to take God's perfect tree, the Word, and mix it and hang it up down there on some kind of a creed. Amen. Death and life won't mix. Amen. Jesus never did attend a funeral service. <laughs> He'd raise the dead. <laughs> Why? Death and life cannot stay together. They're contrary one to the other. He didn't preach no funerals. He just raised them up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Why? Life and death. Now look. They hanged him on a tree. Is that right? Cursed is he that hangs on a tree. Is that right? The Bible said, Cursed is he that hangs on any man made tree. <laughs> Amen. So if today you're trying to hang on some kind of a man made tree, turn loose of it. And don't let it hang you there either. Because <laughs> that's the place for the dead. <laughs> Some man-made Luther, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal organization. Amen. That's right. Some man-made tree. Amen. Don't hang there. Don't let it hang you there either. Amen. They'll hang you there if they can till all the light's gone out of you until you recognize their doctrine. Amen. That's right. But that's where they hung this perfect tree. God's perfect fruit tree hung on a man-made Roman tree. That's right. It was a curse to hang on any man-made tree. What is it? To rid him out of their sight. After it bore all the fruits. After Mary Magdalene said the history. Run before him. And said what has he done? Yeah. What evil did he do? She stopped the procession. Mm. Said what did he do was evil? Has he done nothing but preach the gospel to the poor? Yeah. Has he done nothing but heal the sick? Raise up the dead. And the very signs of the living God is in him. How could you condemn him? And they slapped her in the mouth and said, Would you listen to that ill-famed woman instead of your priest? There you are, your bishop. Amen. 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 Same thing today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, when he done all this and proved himself what he was, and put it down to him and said, If I'm not he, then who are you? If you can condemn me as sin, if I'm anywhere wrong in the Word, you show me. Now let me show you where you're wrong. <laughs> Amen. Sin is unbelief. We know that. Amen. Now, to rid him out of sight, they hate him so bad because he tore up all their organizations. To rid him out of their sight, they buried him <coughs> and rolled a great big denominational stone over the door. Amen. So he'd be sure not to rise again. Amen. <laughs> Oh my. Think of that perfect tree. David looked back and saw it. He said, Standing by the rivers of water, he bringeth forth his leaves and his season and his fruit. It shall not be cast, it, it won't wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He was a son of prosperity. Joseph was a type of him. He was the antitype of Joseph. Everywhere Joseph went, it prospered. Same thing with Jesus. 
His word, my word will prosper. It won't return to me void. It'll accomplish that which I purposed it for. He was the word. The word was sent to the earth, but God and will accomplish exactly what God sent it for. Now, listen close now. This gets rich with cream on top of it. Now notice. Here he comes now. And they, for that very works of God, when he stood and cast him, he said, if I don't do the works that God said I should do, then I'm not him. Don't believe me. But if I do it, then you believe the work. If you can't believe me being a man doing this, then believe the works I do. They testify me. They speak louder than my voice can speak. That's right. And the same thing would apply any time. Yes, sir. Sure would. Now notice. If I don't do the works of my father, then don't believe me not. Believe me not. Then if I do the works, believe me. Then what do they do? Tuck that precious tree. Cut it down. Hang it on a man-made tree. That's right. Cut the life out of it and hang it up on a man-made tree for a mockery. Then they didn't like it. Too many people stand there crying about it. So they took him off. They said, we'll make our denomination so tight that they never get them holy rollers in here. <laughs> so they scooted back in a hole of Joseph of Arimathy. And they rolled a great big stone. Took a century of man to roll it up there. You ever see, see the other night the picture of the big path they rolled the stone up on? Waste tons. Rolled a big organization stone up there so he could not raise up. But did that hold him? No. But I will restore. Let's hit that text on drive. All right. I will restore, saith the Lord. I'll restore him in three days. I'll raise him back up again. They couldn't hide him in that rock. They couldn't hide him out of their sight. They couldn't get him off the hand. I will restore him, saith the Lord. And in three days, he rose up, restored back. After Easter, he is raising. He said, go into all the world and I'm going to go with you. As the living Father has sent me and he's in me, so I send you and will be in you. I'm with you to the end of the world. The works, the same thing that I've done to prove that I was, you'll do the same things to prove that you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that. These signs shall follow them that are believers. Amen. Not make believers, Amen. but believers. Amen. These things that I do, you will do it and vindicate that you're a believer, just the same as the works that I done, because the living Father lives in me. It ain't me that does the works, it's my Father. And it won't be you doing the works, it'll be me and you doing the works. Amen. Now you go into all the world. Otherwise, you're going to farm what's known to me as a bride. See? All right. I'll go with you and I... You will be part of me. You will be my bride. My life will be in your body. Just like a husband and wife is one person. You and I are going to be one. At that day you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you and you in me. Mm. I just love that. Satan just gets so angry at that. Amen. See the oneness of God. All that God was, He poured into Christ, and all Christ was, He poured into the church. Amen. There you are. It makes them all one. Now, now, the bride are one tree of life. In other words, like husband and wife is one, Christ and His bride are one. Same thing, same spirit, same work, same signs, everything else for the works that I do shall you do also. Amen. How long? All over the world. Amen. I must say every creature. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Oh, listen folks now. Go to the fire magnum. <laughs> The Roman caterpillar started eating on that bride tree until it took it come to the roots. Oh, the same Roman tree that what kind of a tree did cut Christ down? Roman. Roman. What kind of a tree that cut Christ's bride down? How? By substituting something besides the word. So you see the Protestant church that don't take the word of God is a daughter to the Roman church. God never at any time organized the church. The Roman Catholic church was the first organization and every one of them are daughters to that organized. They die with her. The Bible said that he would burn her children with fire. How many knows that? The Bible said so. Well, the Bible said that the wheat and the tares would grow together until the last day. 
that he would bind the terriers. Is that right? Amen. First. Yeah. And burn them. Yeah. And the wheat would go to the garner. Is that right? Yeah. The terriers are binding themselves together in organization, confederation of churches, for the atomic burning. Exactly right. But the church is getting ready to go to the garner just as sure as they in the rapture. For the free woman might be heir with the bond woman. The Lord watching for the coming of that glad millennium day when our blessed Lord shall come and catch his waiting right away. Oh, my soul is filled with rapture as I labor, watch and pray for our Lord is coming back to earth again. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Oh, he will burn the terriers and the wheat he'll take to the garner. Roman caterpillars started eating on that tree in the days of Paul. He said, I am persuaded. Scripture here. That after my departing, oh, man will raise up among you, brethren, like sheep's skins over him, wolf inside, and will draw away many after them. Yeah. For the spirit of Antichrist that you heard that was to come into the world is already in the world now, working in the children of what? Yeah. Disobedient. Disobedient to what? The word. Yeah. There your organization begins starting. You see what I mean, friends? Amen. All I see, I'd say amen. amen. Beginning to eat. What did it? That old caterpillar started. That old canker worm. That yeah. Joel saw it. Amen. Jo- Listen now, we're coming down close to the end. Joel saw it. Amen. And he said, what the palmer worm left did the locust eat. What the locust eat, then the canker worm got. What the canker worm left, while well, the caterpillar got it. That's what he said. And that's exactly, that's the tree of God. The tree, cut it down. The canker worm. All right. The Roman caterpillar started eating on that bride tree and tuck it all the way to the roots, cut it all the way back, everything, cut the tree right off like it did Christ Jesus, the bridegroom. Cut the bride right down and started out in creeds and denominations. Same old bug. But what? <laughs> Oh, glory. But in truth was a predestinated seed. Amen. The royal seed of Abraham, it could not die. Amen. The word was in the roots of the promise, I will restore, saith the Lord. Why? All the years that the caterpillar cut off, all that the locusts eaten, all that all the rest of the bugs eat up, I will restore it back, saith the Lord. I'll compare this with last Sunday and Sunday before these messages now. Listen close now as you come to the closing. Watch. I will restore, saith the Lord, all that the bugs eat off. I'll bring every bit of it right back again. Now, sit quiet if you can for a few minutes and listen close. Get ready and pray with all your heart for God to reveal it to you. So God's Promise begin to restore. For God said He would restore it. Just the same as He raised up that bride tree, bridegroom tree, He raised up the bride tree. Because there's going to be one right in our shores of the world. What now? All right. So God's promise began. I will restore, saith the Lord, all that the locust eat, caterpillar. Like in the first time when he built that first church, I'm going to get to some doctrines. Now, if you don't want to believe it, all right, but I, you just, you better search it first. Say, notice, how did he grow that tree in the first place? Ooh, my, this does me so good. I know I don't sound much like a minister standing here like this, but I, I, I love what I'm talking about. So, and our Lord is, like the first time when he started that first church that the Roman caterpillar eat off and canker worm, so forth, he started out with justification by faith. John the Baptist. In St. John, the 13th, uh, 17th chapter, 17th verse, Jesus said, Sanctify them, Father, through the truth thy word is truth. Second work was sanctification to the church. After justification was sanctification. 
And after they were sanctified, he asked them to tarry in the city of Jerusalem, Luke 24, 49, until they were endued with power from on high, and there he gave birth to the tree. Amen. The Holy Ghost, Pentecost. Amen. Justification, sanctification, <laughs> baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then Christ come to dwell in it. Amen. To bring forth the fruits. Amen. 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 Is that right? Amen. John preached justification. Now look, in the, that constitutes the natural birth. When a woman is giving birth to a baby, listen to this. What's the first thing that happens to the woman? What breaks forth is first is water. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Justification. What's the second thing that happens to the woman? Blood. Is that right? Yeah. Blood. Sanctification. Then what's the next thing? Life. Yeah. Water, blood, spirit. St. John, 1 John 5, 7, 7, 5, brother, I believe it is, said, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Amen. And there are three that bear record in earth. Yeah. The water, the blood, and the Spirit, and they are not one, but agree in one. Amen. Amen. You can't have the Father without having the Son. You can't have the Son without having the Holy Ghost. But you can't be justified without being sanctified. You can't be sanctified without having the Holy Ghost. What about that Nazarene, brother? They have been sanctified by Jesus Christ a year and six months before the Holy Ghost ever come. Is that right? They were sanctified by Jesus Christ. Now, as He brought forth the first bride tree that the locusts and palm worms eat down, He's restoring the Second tree, bring it up from that predestinated roots that cannot die, that's standing by the rivers. It's living in this waters. It couldn't show itself, but it's there anyhow. Amen. Now, it's starting to notice the same insect as he restores back the same thing by the same way. Amen. The first one that tree started to come forth out of Catholicism was Martin Luther who preached justification. The second angel was John Wesley, who preached sanctification. Luther preached justification, just to live a faith. Wesley preached sanctification, second death and work of grace. And then come the Holy Ghost. Just as he built the tree up the first time, here he is restoring again in the same manner the second time. Amen. See that? Notice the same insect. Amen. That little rascal. The same insect. That started and killed the tree in the beginning started right back at that Lutheran branches. Yes, but what? It can't kill it. Amen. It can't kill it because God then said, I will restore. Amen. That insect started on Luther to kill all the Lutheran branches. It come right over to Wesley and kill all the Wesley branches. But the main part of the tree keeps coming. Now notice in the old time, when the tree was killed, it was killed. What come to the root? When it killed it back there. But this time, because the word's predestinated, there's nothing going to stop it. Amen. God said, I will restore. No matter how much they organize, how much they do this, that, the other, I'm going to restore it. Amen. That is it. All the laughing, making fun, scoffing, calling holy rollers, nonsense, everything you want to, God still said, I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. Just as sure as he raised Jesus out of the grave under three days, under three dispensations or three sections, he's going to raise the church to its fullness and power again. I will restore, saith the Lord. What happened? That old caterpillar started eating and having the same kind of effects that he did. But what did he do? He only got the Lutheran branches. He never got the spirit behind that the Luther had. For it lived right on. Amen. Then along come Wesley. And after Wesley died, that great prophet, after Wesley died, what did they do? They organized and all the branches died. But what did he do? The church lived right on. Amen. Come right on into Pentecost where they organized. What happened? The branches died. Well, what? The church goes right on. Amen. What? 
The same thing Pentecostal did, the same old Catholic denominational creed that took it in the first place to destroy the tree in the, the bride tree in the first place is the same old tactics that the devil did on the second tree. Amen. But what? God predestinated it. She's got to go on. Amen. Regardless, if it all, if it wouldn't been, when Luther organized, that would have settled it right there. Yeah. It all went back just like another, it had been second Catholic church, Roman Catholic church. Right. See, but God was determined to, he's done, spoke his word. His law will see that it comes to pass. No matter how many late frost it has, it's going to live anyhow. It might have cold spell and denominational difference and everything, but that tree's going to live. It's a short way. There's a living God to make it live. Yes, sir, he said, I will restore it. I know we got some late spring, late season of Easter coming. The Lord's tearing is coming to say everything like that. And the cold winds kill a lot of them denominational branches, but it can't kill that life. It's predestinated. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not. All that he foreknew, he called those who he called, he has Hallelujah. justified those who he had justified, he has already Amen. glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. It's written in the book of Lamb's book of life and cannot die. Amen. Hallelujah. All, the, Hallelujah. all the bugs that hell can turn loose on will never stop her. No communism, Catholicism, no nothing else will stop it. I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. All the man made Roman trees will never hang it there. All the graves will never keep it there. All the big denominational stones laying at the door will never keep it in there. I will restore There will be an Easter. I'll bring forth that same church in its same power. I'll bring that bride out just like she was back there with the same signs, the same fruit, the same things that they did. Restore all that the denominations eat off. Thank restore all the organization eat off. I will restore, saith the Lord. All of it. Now, you say, what about them things that went off in denomination? God is the good husband. He pruned the tree, that was all. <laughs> Cut off all the dead limbs. What's he going to do? Burn them up there. Right. God is the husband of the of this tree. He takes care of. He watches over his heritage. He what is his heritage? His own word. He watches over his word to confirm. To watch it, see where he can get. It. Uh, he's going to restore. So when these churches begin to organize and things like that, he just proves them all, and the church goes on. When the, when the Lutheran said we we're going to become an organization, we'd be as big as a Catholic. All right, he just pruned off the branch, and Wesley cut it right on. Raised up another prophet. Then as soon as Wesley did it, uh, well, Wesley died, the great prophet, what did he organize it? On come Pentecost. As soon as she died, he pruned that off. He's raising right on up. See, he's going to restore. Where does the fruits grow? It don't start down here on the bottom. It starts in the top. Where does the sun hit the tree first? Ah, glory. In the evening light, at the top of the tree. Right there. Right down on the bottom branches, but up there at the top of the tree is where the fruit ripens at. Amen. 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 Do you love him? Amen. 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 Will you serve him? Amen. Amen. Do you believe him? Amen. Amen. I sure do believe him. With all my heart. Yes. Now, what is it? He's going to prune off them old dead vines. As she comes up, all those organization vines, so she gets right in the top of the tree, that's where he's going to get his fruit. Now notice, God prunes her. All right. They are dead. And won't come into the the presence of God, won't come in the first resurrection, but be with the vine fruit of the original organization uh, uh, vine of God. They'll go into the organizational group, but they won't come with the fruit of the vine. Now look, God never did put out uh, organization. The church puts a dress in an organization. And God cuts it off. Amen. Cuts off its lifeline. It bears organizational fruit. But if that vine put forth a branch that come out of the vine, it'll bear the same as that did. Amen. So you see, the first one was, and Romans set their beetles over there and eat it off. But God's going to grow one so high that it can't touch it. Amen. It's going to come on out. Amen. Hey, man. I'm, let's go. <laughs> The trees 
goes from one place to another. From one dispensation to another dispensation. From Luther, it went to Wesley. From Wesley to Pentecost. From Pentecost, it goes to the Word. It is Easter again for the true believers of His never failing Word. It's Easter. It's a resurrection. God's got people everywhere. It's Easter for them. Why? They have risen. Amen. Amen. Risen from those creeds and denominations. Come right up to them. It's Easter again. The raw seed has been hid in the roots, the Word. Hid back here in this Word for years and years and years and just now begin to be revealed. It's Easter time. Predestinated from the foundation of the world, this church is beginning to stand. Notice... How did God predestinate in the beginning? I got, I'm going to say it anyhow. All right. Notice here that uh, to restore the first perfect tree in three days after its death, after the first tree's death, He restored it in three days. Is that right? Amen. Restored it back. Now, the bride tree is also going to be restored in three ages. Three stages, rather. Amen. Three stages it'll be restored. Amen. Now look, what? Justification. Sanctification. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. I notice. After three days, the first tree restored as at the beginning having the same signs, same wonders. Jesus come back, the same Jesus doing the same thing. At the end of the third day, the signs appeared. Amen. Not the end of the first day. Oh, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting it. Amen. At the third day Hallelujah. is when the real manifestation of Christ is made known at the end of the third day. Amen. See? Notice, are you getting it? Amen. Not at the first day, oh, dead form. Second day, there was a rumor. See? Or the second day was still dead. Luther, Wesley. At the beginning of the third day, there was a rumor around. <laughs> Nothing on the first day, Luther. Nothing on the second day. And in the third day, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, there was a rumor around that he was the same yesterday and forever. Amen. But at the end of the third day, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. that's where he made himself known. Amen. Come right among them. Amen. Come among his people. Amen. And say, look at me. Yeah. I'm the same one. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The dead forms went on until they got to Pentecost and they began to room around that he was. Now here in the last day, here he is right with us. Moving on and on. At the end of the third day, he appeared and showed all of them his resurrection sign. And he was alive. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Living fruits of his presence. Living fruits of His presence. Are you getting it? Amen. Was manifested at the very end of the day. Amen. When He appeared to all of them. Hallelujah. His church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? They all got together. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. At the end of the third day. The evening lights, the Bible said, would shine in the last days. The evening light is the same light in the west that was the same light that was in the east. And the same light that shined in the east that brought forth the first church that the Romans cut down by their, their pagan worship and so forth, in the evening light is the same light. Now, no, it's the same light. And what's the evening light come out for? What is the evening light for? To restore. You get it? 
The Amen. evening light is for the same purpose the morning light was for. Amen. To restore what was cut down by the dark ages to Rome, God is going to restore by shining forth the evening light. Amen. What? Restore the whole Word of God again. Amen. The full manifestation of Christ in His church. Everything that He did just exactly the way He did it be again in the evening light. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what I mean? Oh, is that wonderful? Yeah. And look, we're living out here to see it. Yeah. Now, the evening light, exactly according to prophecy, the evening light come out to restore what? To restore what the bugs that eat up. It started growing, and then what to do it? Denominated, so God pruned them all, bound them up, laid them back, let them go ahead and organize. Then the next one come up, he bound them up, laid them off, three went on. Then he bound them up, laid them off, so now one of these days they'll be burned, bind them up in their organization. But then what? Right in top of the tree, it's where the fruit ripens first. That's right. Right in top of the tree. So it's the top of the tree here that sees the evening light. Now Noah had three rooms in his ark. One room was for the creeping things. See? The second room was for the fowls. <laughs> but the top room was where the light was. Amen. The light that shined first. Amen. Never come on the first floor, second floor, but on the top floor. Amen. The tree don't bear its fruit first at the bottom, second like that. It's all pruned off in the organization. But it's in the top part where I will restore, saith the Lord. I'll send forth the evening light. And it'll bring back. Bring back the Word. Making it manifest. I will restore all that I promised. Praise all that I promised. The same Holy Spirit will bear, bear the same signs. I'll have an Easter, a resurrection for the bride, the same as I had for the bridegroom. See, evening lights uh, come out to shine, same as in the morning, same signs, same things. The same light will produce the same fruit that they had there if it's shining on the same tree. Amen. 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 Proves His word now fulfilled. I will restore, saith the Lord. Now listen closely. Now, there was... Listen now, don't miss this now. There was four death messengers. Or would you rather we just close? Would you rather... Oh, 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 oh. Listen real close now. Look, there was four, four death messengers killed that tree. Is that right? What was it? Palmer worm, locust, canker worm, caterpillar. Is that right? Four messengers of Roman devils, dogmas, killed that tree. Amen. One took its fruit. One took its bark. Or took its leaves. One took its bark. One took the life. Is that right? Amen. Four messengers of dogmas killed the tree. All but the roots. And if four messengers of death kill the tree... Four messengers of life restores the tree. Do you get it? Amen. <laughs> For God said, I will restore it. He's going to restore it how? But four death messengers killed it. Then four life messengers will restore it. What was the first? Martin Luther. Justification. What was the second? John Wesley by sanctification. What was the third? Pentecost with the restoration of the gifts. The Holy Ghost, baptism of the Holy Ghost. What was the fourth? The Word. Amen. What? The Word. Amen. There were four great prophets. One of them, Martin Luther, he began to shine a light. There was a little light, just a very small strength, the justification. Long come Wesley, stronger sanctification. After Wesley come the stronger than him, Pentecostal, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And another great prophet, see? But in the last days of Malachi 4, Elijah is to come. With the very word, the word of the Lord came to the prophet in the evening lights is to come forth to restore and bring back what? Turn the hearts of the children back to the Amen. Fourth line. 
Four killers took it. Four messengers destroyed it. Four messengers of death took it away in dogmas. Four messengers of righteousness yeah. restored it back again. Yeah. Prophesy, son of man. Can these bones live? Wish we had time. We got to go down here. But I had to miss that. Prophesy. Can these bones live? What's the four stages of that coming forth in that church? Amen. What's the four stages of Ezekiel's dry bones coming forth? But the life only comes, not when the city of skin is on, but when the wind blows upon them. That's when it comes back that fourth passage of life. I will restore, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise be to God. The fourth Light is to come that will bring forth the same signs. Watch. Justification brought back the pulp. Sanctification brought back the bar. Doctrine of holiness. What brought back the leaf? Pentecostals. What is it? Pentecostals. Leaves. Clap their hands. Joy. Rejoicing. Pentecostal. What? The fourth was the word itself. The word made flesh. Fruits of the proof of the resurrection sign Amen. that Christ has finally, after justification been planted, sanctification been planted, baptism of the Holy Ghost, organizations died out, and Christ has again centered himself Amen. like that cap of the pyramid. First line justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, then coming of the cap. What is it? That Holy Ghost bunch being honed out so that it can fit with the same kind of ministry he had when he went away that when he comes back it'll catch the whole thing in the rapture where the justified, sanctified, and baptism of the Holy Ghost that pyramid will stand again. The house of God will live again. The tree of life is growing again. Israel's awakening. The signs that the prophets foretold. Gentile days numbered with horrors encumbered. Return, O disperse to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with the Spirit, your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up, your redemption is near. False prophets are lying. God's truth they're denying that Jesus the Christ is our God. Amen. But we'll walk where the apostles have tried. For the day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear of tongues and everything else. But be filled with the Spirit. Your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up. Your redemption is near. Amen. Restore all the signs. The sign of Lot at the end time. We went through that. How that Lot, this angel of Jehovah, made flesh among the people, sat with his back turned to the tent and said, Where is Sarah thy wife? In the tent behind you. He said, I'm going to visit you. And Sarah laughed. He said, why did Sarah laugh? Her in the tent. Amen. Jesus said, it'll be the same thing at the coming. Oh, then the evening light of Malachi 4 comes shining through the darkness. Amen. To bring the evening light on the predestinated word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's that fourth message to be? What's that fourth messenger? To shine the light on the Word. The Word's predestinated. It has to come for something. It has to do it. For God said, I will restore, say the Lord. I will restore. Right. The evening lights come shining through on that predestinated Word. Yes, sir. Oh, it shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. In the waterway is the light today buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. For the evening lights have come. It is a fact that God and Christ are one. There they are. One together, one in us. The same signs human beings can't do is manifesting themselves. Comes out the word to bring forth 
the predestinated word of God out of the roots of the tree back at her that all the denominations have refused and refused and refused but there will come a light for it. There will come a light. Rise. Whereabouts? Over in Jerusalem? No, sir. Evening lights will not rise in Jerusalem. The evening lights goes where? In the West. Amen. They had their day and refused it. Oh, my. But the evening lights shall rise in the West. What for? To shine upon the Word. Amen. What? To ripen the fruit. Amen. Bring forth the bright tree with the same signs, wonders, and fruits that they had at the beginning. Shall be light in the evening time. Amen. Right. Oh, the word will then bring forth its fruit in its season. It shall not wither, but it will bring forth its fruit, David said, in its seasons. Yeah. Amen. Same fruit it had at the beginning. Now, with his word in his predestinated stage as he's got it now, and we see these words all being manifested, what is it? It's a perfect a vindication Amen. that the coming of the Lord is at hand. And the time when he said, I will restore, saith the Lord, all that them canker worms, all that the Methodists left, all that the caterpillars eaten, all of this done there till they stripped it down, but I will restore it in the evening time. Oh my. I believe I could almost preach now, honestly. Amen. Take off. Take off. Go ahead. Take off, brother. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. chopped up some way I pray that the Holy Spirit will go with it on these tapes across the nations if I shall be taken from the earth may this live Lord it's your word let the evening light shine Lord bring forth this glorious bride of Christ bless it Lord may it not return to you void May it accomplish that which it was been purposed for. Grant it, Father. All praises shall be thine. Now we know, Father, no matter what we would say, it's still word and we believe it. But we would desire thee, Lord, on this Easter morning, that thou would prove to this congregation, maybe some here for their first time, that you are still Jesus. That you are not a dead form. That you are a living, resurrected God. That you live among us today. Grant that, Father, and we'll praise thee. Through Jesus' name, amen. How many in here are sick? I see your hands. Let's raise up your hands. Oh, did is Billy Paul, did he get I believe he gave out prayer cards, didn't he? Yeah. Um, what were they? E one to hundred. We can't take them all, but let's get a few. I'm just standing right along here, if you will. Hey, who's got number one? Let's see, number one. E number one, raise up your hand. Prayer card. Look on your card. If you're able to get up, all right. Number one. Well, are you sure you got the right one? No, all right. No Let's we'll start somewhere. Oh, well, okay. If you got it, we'll start there then. Okay. Number one. Make your way right around here. If you can walk. If you can't, well, we'll pack it. Please. All right. Number one. Number two. Raise your hand right quick now. 
Number two, come right here. Number three, right here, sir. Number four, number four, number five. Now, everybody just be seated just for a few minutes. Number five, number six, raise your hand right quick. Number six, 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 let me see it, please. Somebody's pointing your hand. I don't, oh, from, he's back in the room there. All right. Number six. All right. Just a moment now. Seven. Seven. All right. The lady back there. Eight. Now, if everybody just keep your... Please, just a moment now. Just real quiet now. Now, this is going to be the proof. Amen. Amen. This is the proof. Amen. Six, seven, one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven. You're going up there. All right. Seven. All right, sir. That's fine. Eight. She's eight. 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 All right, brother. Eight, nine. Ten. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Well, it seemed like you quit coming. Well, we'll start there. That's all right. Maybe in a few minutes. All right. Let's pray now. Father God, just a word from you will mean so much. Let, let, let the people see the heart. I, I try to be honest. Try to tell them your word. Lord, forgive your servants' mistakes. Uh, I just, I, I just make so many of them, Lord. I, I pray that you'll not look at your servants' mistakes. But you look at your word, which I'm trying to preach. Lord, I thank you for it. I'm glad with all my heart. Lord, it's more than life to me. I give my life any time for it. I, I know it's true. It's your word. And please forgive my stupid ways, Lord. Many times that I, I joss and joke that I, I shouldn't do. I'm ashamed of that, Lord. Uh, I just come from that kind of a family. You just overlook it, please, Father, if you will. Cover it with your blood. That's what I ask you to do. Just I confess it. You can't overlook it. But you can uh, forgive me when I confess it. Now I've confessed my sins. I confess the sins of this people. I pray, God, that you'll forgive them, each one. And uh, people, may they realize that we're just not trying to put on some kind of an act. It is the Holy Spirit in the last days, a bearing record of His Word, as I have just said it. But Father, no matter, I'm just a man. And if I'd say it, they'd say that's his interpretation. That's what he thinks about it. But Father, if you'll just speak and prove that it's right, Amen. then they'll have, to, they'll have to cross over you to get by it then, Lord. Yeah. Then it won't be my interpretation. It'll be yours. Grant it, Lord. And if I be your servant and, and, and my sin's forgiven and you call me for this work, then speak to it, Lord, I pray that you'll grant it. Heal the sick and afflicted everywhere. In Jesus' name I pray. And if you'll just make yourself known to us now. Just like you did there at the well with that woman when you talked with her. You told her something that was wrong with her. She had five husbands. Now, you promised to do it in the evening time. You promised to do it in the last days. You said, and it, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, so will it be. God living in human flesh. Moving among us in the form of His church and the Holy Spirit, performing the same sign. Grant it, Lord, just today, won't you, Father? Then I pray that you will let the people sit and everyone be healed and saved for the glory of God. Amen. Now, I'm going to call your attention now. If you just be real reverent for a few minutes, now everybody just quiet as you possibly can be now. Are you... Sure that you're realizing the position that I'm in here now. I preached a word here. The word of God. I said it's all true. Jesus said that he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he also. Now I want to ask you a question. Be careful where you say amen or not now. Jesus himself never claimed to heal anybody. That is true. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. Is that right? And Jesus said in St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, absolutely, I say unto you, the Son himself as a man, is just a tabernacle where God lives. See? He said, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. 
That doeth the Son likewise. Otherwise the Father shows me a vision what to do and I do just as he tells me. Now, one day we find that there was, say, a little woman couldn't get in the prayer line. She had a blood issue. And she'd had it for many years. So she just touched his garment, staying within herself. She was insignificant. She was just a poor little old woman. Didn't have no money. And she couldn't get up there. Then priests and all of them stand there who had the rights to stand and everything. So she couldn't stand up there. So she just crawled around until she got there and touched his garment. She said, I believe he's just exactly. He, he brings us the truth, the life. I believe he's the word of God. And if I can just touch him, I, I'll be made whole. Do you believe, could you believe the same thing that woman believes? That he is the Word of God. Now the Bible says today that he's the high priest. Our high priest right now. Do you believe that? After his resurrection and his ascension, he ascended on high and gave gifts to man. And now he's sitting at the right hand of God, the majesty on high, and to make intercessions upon what we confess. Is that right? Amen. And he's a high priest that can be what? Touched. Yeah. By what? The feeling of our infirmity. Now, if he is, you believe he's the same? Yeah. Now look, if you come here and just touch me all day long, it wouldn't make a bit of difference. If you touched any other brother or sister, it wouldn't make much difference. Just the order of laying on hands is all. But if you just touch him, that's all you have to do. And look, if you touch him with, a, with some kind of a ritual like they did, they say, oh, we believe this great teacher, this is a prophet. Well, he didn't say nothing, but that little woman had a certain thing to touch him. Her faith. She touched his garment. And he said, who touched me? Don't you believe that the Bible says he's the same high priest today he was then? He, it can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. You can touch him out there whether you're in this prayer line or not. If you are sick, or if you've got a loved one that's sick, if you've got something on your heart, you just reverently come before God and say, God, I don't know about that man standing there. He's a little bald-headed man. He, he's nothing. But I believe that what he preached is the truth. Amen. And I believe that he said the right thing, that you are the high priest. Now, I want to touch you. And if he's told me the truth, then you use his lips to speak back and tell me like you did the woman back there. See if he's the same yesterday and forever. Amen. That's right. Do that. That isn't just to make him the same yesterday and forever, is it? I, everyone, keep your position and just reverently pray. What's that? Um, how, I've got 10 back there now. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. With prayer cards, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18. 19, 20. 21, 22. 23, 24. 25. That works to make a pretty good line. If we, I hope we're going to keep you here very long. But now, are you at the end? That's all right. Just, that's all. Let's hum closely now, all together, all together. Only believe. Only believe. disciples. They were defeated on an epilepsy case. The father standing there looking at his child crying. The disciples are going through all their maneuvers but it wouldn't work. Jesus come walking up. Some of them said, there he is. Somebody pointed them to Jesus. Away from the clergy to Jesus. That's where I want to point people. Not to me or some church, but to Jesus. Said he is able so the father run, fell down at his feet and said, Lord, have mercy on my child. He's fiercely vexed with the devil. And he pines away. He frosts at the mouth. He falls into spasms, epilepsy. He said, and I've took him everywhere. Even your disciples couldn't do anything for him. Jesus said, I can if you'll believe. 
For all things are possible in him that believes. Just oh, same yesterday, today, and all night. I get tired. Christ's name I pray. Amen. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I take every spirit in here under my control for His glory. Now look down this prayer line. There isn't one person in that prayer line that I know. They're everyone strangers to me. All of you in that prayer line that's strangers to me and I don't know nothing about you, your troubles or nothing, raise up your hands. Everyone along in the prayer line. How many audience are strangers to me and I don't know nothing about you? You have the same authority out there as these two. You're only singling out one person at a time. Here. Let me take this around here. Can you hear now with this? This lady here. Here's a man and woman meets again. I don't know her, never seen her. She's a stranger to me, but just a perfect stranger. I'm only acting... Upon the basis of that word. That word said the works that I do shall you do also if you believe in me. And the other morning when that vision come again after thousands of them and said the never failing presence of Jesus Christ is with you wherever you go. I believe that. Amen. Solemnly with all my heart. I never see you again. You believe that to be the truth. That is true. Here's a woman I have never seen in my life. She's just a woman that received a prayer card. The way the boy usually does not he comes in here and takes the prayer cards and shuffles them all up together before you people. Give anybody a prayer card that wants one, wherever it is. No one knows where the lines go to start or nothing about it. Therefore, the boy couldn't say, Oh, now here, I, uh, if you give me so much, I'll put you up front and be sure that you're there. He don't know himself. <laughs> Nobody knows. We just start wherever the Holy Spirit says call. We call from right there. And I trust sometimes that they get somebody, when I'm here especially, that somebody that has never strangers, see, that I don't know. Now, if this woman standing here, if the, see something wrong, she may be sick, she may have somebody else sick, she, she, she may be just standing there, maybe she's just putting on like she's sick. And maybe she's just standing there trying to expose something. If she is, just watch what happens, see. You've seen that tried too, haven't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Watch them pack her out the door dead. See? So now you you just find out. See if it's right or not. See? Try. See? Now we're not playing church, friends. We're at the end time. The fruits in the top of the tree is a right name. I try. The Lord is coming. I don't know her. God knows her. He knew her before there ever was a world. He knew her. He knew she'd stand right there. He knew I'd stand right here, for He's infinite. Is that right? Yeah. Now, if He's infinite and knew it, then He knows why the woman's stand there. And then the same God that the Jesus, when He was here on earth with a God in Him, had talked to the woman at the well and told her something was wrong with her. We all know what it was, don't we? And she said, Sir, you must be a prophet. That was her first expression. Now, we know that it's time for the Messiah to be here which is called the Christ. And when He comes, that's going to be the thing that He does. Now, if He's the same yesterday and forever and promised by this Word that I just preached that in the evening time He would be here and do the same thing, then we're looking for it, isn't it? Aren't we? Looking for that resurrection of that church. Now, if He will perform to this woman the same as He did back there, that confirms the Word. That is right. Now, the lady just held her hand and me too that we're strangers one to another. I don't know her. I've never seen her. She's just a stranger standing here. So are you out there, many of you. I know some of these people sitting along here. And um, I don't know many. I know Miss Collins here. I'm sure of that. 
Sister, Brother Ben's wife, and uh, I've seen Brother and Sister Dow here. Brother Wright, Brother and Sister Dow, Brother Will on the end. I know some of you around here, but I, I don't know too many of you because I'm not in here very much to get acquainted. And uh, we have uh, strangers in here. And so you just pray. If I be a stranger to you, and I profess that the evening lights have come, and the evening light would be the same as the morning light. It would reveal the same mysterious fruits of God, spiritually speaking. That is right. I'm only talking to you like he did that woman at the well. He said, bring me a drink. See? I'm saying the same thing. That's not me, it's him. But if he will reveal to me what you're standing there for, see, if he will reveal to me what you're there for, then you'll know that he does know all about your life. If he'll tell you something that has been, see, you know whether that's right or not. Then if he knows what has been and can tell you that, he can surely believe in man for what will be if he can already tell you what you've done back here. Surely that would reveal the front of it, or the back of it, four of it, and all of it, make it right. It will the congregation believe on him with all your heart if he'll do it. I believe you believe whether you did it or not. You still believe it, but this only clamps it down. Now, I'm just looking at the woman, and she's becoming anointed. She's aware, being a stranger to me, but just let me show you now. Many of you see that picture hanging up there. That's not up that light. That's exactly what's hanging right here between me and that woman right now. Did you see that? Kind of a, kind of a cream, yellowish, green, emerald-like light, as you call it. It's milling right. That's what's making her feel. Right, just let me show you something. You feel a real sweet, humble feeling. If that's right, lady, raise up your hand so the people can see See? It's, she can't help from this right there. See, now, now if it breaks in on her, I don't know. It depends. That it has to be God. I can't do it myself. It's it's God. I have to do it. Yes, the lady is really by natural would be pending an operation. She's got something that the doctor would tell her that must be operated for, but she doesn't go to the doctor. That is right. And she has, she, it's a, a growth. And that growth is on the right side near the spine. That is right. That's right. Raise up your hand so it's people see. Now you believe? Now you don't see it. See. But you believe it with all your heart. Now it's, it's true. All right. All right. Now you say, maybe you guess that, Brother Bram. You can't guess that a million times perfect. Just let her stand there a minute. It's gone from me right now. Uh, let's, let's see just a moment. See, she seems to be all right. Christian. Now let's see. Now just, if he will tell us something else, that would be, yes, here she comes right back up again. Yes, here she's, uh, she's, uh, yes, it's a, it's a growth that's, that the doctors would remove and it's, it would cause her trouble, but she has, Going to trust Christ for it. And uh, not uh, only that, she isn't from around here. And she's got somebody with her. It's her husband. And he's suffering too. That's right. Do you believe God can tell me while I'm looking right at the man here in this vision what's wrong with him? Well, tell him to go eat his dinner. His stomach trouble has left. <laughs> you believe it's Christ doing that? You're from Tennessee, Nashville. That's right. Mrs. Bankley. All right, you can go back home now and be well, you and your husband. God bless you. Right. You believe the Lord Jesus? If that isn't the same Lord Jesus that was here in the days gone by in the evening light church, examine the woman, talk to her, ask her if those things, what was said, was right. If you just believe. Now, are you satisfied that he's Christ the same? Now, you know I couldn't do that. I'm a man. I'm your brother. But he's God. Now, let's see. Is this the next person? You was in the prayer line? All right. Now, of course, that anointing, you realize, just weakens me like I don't know what. Now, Jesus, when that little woman touched his garment, he said, I perceive that virtue went from me. Is that right? That means strength. He got weak. And if, he, if that would have happened... 
to the Word itself, what would it do to just one the Word came to? What would it, if it did that to the Son of God, what would it come to me, a sinner, saved by His grace? See, it just swims me around and around. See? But yet, I'm here to represent Him. To rep- I'm a poor representative. I, I repent of all my sins. That, that you won't look at what I am, but look who He is. That you'll look that way. Now, I am a stranger to you, lady. I don't know this woman either. We're strangers to one another. That's right. Now, if the Lord Jesus, me not knowing you and you not knowing me, if the Lord Jesus will reveal something to me that you're here for, something you've done or something you ought not have done, or something in that way, you know, be a, that would be an outstanding miracle. That's something that cannot be explained. A miracle is something that cannot be explained. Anyone knows that, see? That would be an outstanding miracle. It would be more of a miracle if there was a, a lady sitting here in a wheelchair and had arthritis and the dog stole up. And I'd tell her, get up and walk. And she'd go walking out of there. Everybody would scream at that. But you see, actually the power of, of her faith to believe and just get up and walk could do that. But to go back down there and pull out a life somewhere, that takes more than that. That takes God alone. Or you can say, see, you know where that's right. Now, Something happened somewhere else. I wait. It's left here. It's gone to the uh, gone in the audience. Somewhere. Somewhere. It's gone now. Just a minute. Let me talk to the woman again. Now, just be real reverent and watch now. And just pray. Be praying out there. I want you to pray, Lord. Let it be me. Some of you people out there that won't be in the prayer line, just pray. Again, I speak to you to, for your faith. See, if it can be uh, did to that other woman, it can be done to you. It's your faith. See, you're the one that does it. It's not me. It's your faith in God. See, Jesus never said, Oh, I knew I was going to meet that woman over there. No. But when the resurrection of Lazarus come, now that's what God showed him to do. See, God said, go away. And he, he proved just what he was. Went away. And then when he come back, he said, Lazarus, sleep it. And he come back and went and raised Lazarus in the grave. Called his soul after he'd been gone four days. And he never said he got weak there. That was God using the gift. But this, when that woman touched him, it was a woman using the gift of God. And that's the same thing here. It's you doing it. Now on this on the hunting trips where the seen the bear and where the different things and all these different things is foretold here and told while they come to pass just word by word that's God that don't bother me but when the people begin to use the gift of God see you become God's public servant for you just to tap in the line see and then you touch him by that then he speaks back see? now yes now the woman is coming into the vision. She's coming in or the vision's moving in. Looks like you can see that around her. The woman is sick. She's really sick. She's suffering one thing with a stomach trouble awful bad. Raise up your hand if that's true. And you have complications of things. That is true. You also have someone with you. It's your husband and he's sick. If God will reveal to me, to your husband, what's wrong with him, will you believe me to be his prophet? The man is bothered with his eyes, with his ears, and he's in a very bad condition. Yes, sir. Do you believe God knows who you are? Would you believe me to be his prophet, his seer, if I tell you who you are? You believe it? Mrs. Robertson? And you're from Huntsville. That's Alabama. Return back, you and your husband, and be well. You believe all things are possible for them that believe. If you can believe. If you just take your take your position and believe that God does it. Now don't doubt, but just believe with all your heart that God will grant this healing to you and you can have whatever you've asked for. All right, sir, you come up now. Let's see. Is you the next person here? All right, sir. I suppose that we're strangers one to another, sir. If uh, Jesus came to a man named Simon, told him about his condition, and it made Simon go and believe with all of his heart, would it cause you to do the same thing? It would. 
Or we being strangers. Now, God is no different between male or female. He's just the same. He's God. And do you, will you believe that that feeling that's around you now, that God will be able to reveal to you through me, His servant, that something that you're here for, something's wrong with you, whatever it is, well, you know whether it's the truth or not. All right? May He grant it. The man is coming into a vision, or the vision's coming into the man. He is not here for sickness. He's here seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what he's seeking. That is right, sir. Yes, sir. And um, you're not from here. You're from up the road here, a place called Seymour, Indiana. That's, that's where you're from. They call you Bill. They will return back and receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe me. Come, lady. Do you believe me to be his prophet? You believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lives and you believe it's his permitting this to happen like this? You believe it? How many have we had? What? See, I don't want to get too weak. All right? No. It's nothing. You're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. And that somebody else isn't here. If I'll tell you what's the matter with that somebody else, will you accept the healing and take and believe it's a cancer? You believe that they'll be healed? Then go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And believe. That's, that's, you believe all of you? You believe that anointing of the Holy Spirit? Isn't He wonderful? Are you believing? All right. Uh, how many have we had? Usually two, two or three is a confirmation. Um, I say four. Is this the fifth one standing here? All right. Let's... Um, Let's us believe with all our heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're here for that baby. If God will reveal to me what's wrong with your baby, will you believe that God will heal it? The little fella has a serious heart trouble. That is right. The baby, you're not. The baby is not from here. It's from out of town. It's out of state. You believe God can tell me where the baby come from? Will you believe and believe it'll get well then? Take it back to Franklin, Kentucky. That's it. And believe it all. If you believe, that's all you have to do. The, that, come here. They shall lay their hands on the sick. They shall recover. You want to go eat? Think you make you feel better? Go ahead. It's left you now. Amen. You believe that female trouble is going to leave you? All right. Go to your seat and say, Thank you, Lord. How do you do, sir? Oh, that devil. Has been. Just a moment. Just a moment now. Something went wrong. Something didn't go wrong, went right. Now there's something in here similar that caught that man just at that time. Let me see again what it was. Now just look at me. Don't say that. Just a moment. It's a colored man. He's sitting right back here looking at me. It's his, he's, he's got someone that's sick. That's right. Asthmatic and scientist. That's right. You touched him. You're not from here, sir. You come from the east, northeast, this way. You come from New York. Yes, sir, that's right. You're, 
Mr. Hunt, you believe now. All right, sir. That's good. That's your friend sitting there by you praying. You believe me, sir, to be God's prophet? You come here with him. Your name is Coleman. And you, you're praying for a father that's got a stroke. That's thus saith the Lord. You believe. Oh, believe now. It'll leave you. You got a nervous stomach. It gives you trouble. Isn't that right? Go eat. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe he heals you? Just go back and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Believe with all your heart. You're bothered with a nervous trouble, all upset. Believe with all your heart. Go back and be well. Nervousness. Just believe with all your heart. Believe that God will make you well and he'll do it. Don't doubt a bit. Nervous and heart trouble. You believe that Jesus Christ will make you well? Go be made well in the name of Jesus. Nervous, upset, stomach trouble, bothering you with a gastric condition in your stomach, cause your food to sour. Go and don't doubt in your heart and it'll come to pass you won't have it no more. Your back's been bothering you. You believe with all your heart? Then go and Jesus Christ make you well of this. Just a moment. Hold still just a moment. Now something happened. This woman here is strange. That light circled her real fast and then went away and run right back again. Something happened. Just a moment. It was a colored man. I'm sure it wasn't the colored brother there because it come. Just a minute. Here it is. Step back, Billy. Here it is. It's this man sitting here. Colored man. You're bothered with the back trouble too. That is right. You're a stranger to me. I am to you. But there's one thing you need better than the back trouble. That's give your heart to Christ and become a Christian. You're not. Will you accept Him as your Savior? You come from Ohio. That's right. From Ohio. Go back. Be made well. Jesus Christ forgives your sins and you go home and be healed. Now it's all over. Leave with all your heart. All right, sister, come. Complications, nervousness, and weary. You believe with all your heart that God will make you well? Go to your seat and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for me. You believe that God Almighty will make you well and heal your back and make you well and cure the kidney trouble? Make you... Go right on your road rejoice and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You believe somebody that makes you well? Say, Thank you, dear God. Go just praising God. I you believe with all your heart, sister? Then go in Jesus Christ make you well. Just a moment. No, it wasn't her. Just a moment. It wasn't the lady there. Just a second now. Just a moment. Seen water splashing in something. Somebody sure this cross the sea from somewhere. It's a woman. And she's come from Holland. Where is she? There she is. All right, sister. You come a long ways for healing. You believe me to be his prophet? You suffer with rheumatism and arthritis, stiffness. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and take the message to your people. God bless you to leave you and you can go and be made home. Amen. Do you believe? Here, way back here at the back. It's a woman sitting right back here. And she's suffering with a gallbladder condition. Oh, she's going to miss it. God help me. She, uh, she comes from Indianapolis. Her name is Gilbert. Stand up where you are, lady. There you are. Be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you all believe with all your hearts? Later, is Jesus risen from the dead? Is He the same yesterday and forever? Lay your hands on one another and let's pray while I pray for Sister Kelly. Lord Jesus, let Your holy power come into the church now and may it sweep.
We three and in our sister here to spare her life, Lord. Give her this great healing that she's claiming for, Lord. Heal your people here. Give glory unto yourself. Read it, Lord, and may these people here that's now got their hands on one another. Satan, we are now coming to these handkerchiefs. In the name of Jesus Christ, may each person be healed. Lord, confirm your word with signs following. And now Satan, you foul devil, you are defeated. God said he would restore the Son of God in whom you betrayed to your creeds. He promised to restore the church to its former conditions when the evening lights shine. And we're living in it. And by restoring, we have a right. We have our attorney. We have our lawyer, our high priest. And we're going to force the claim. You've held them long enough. You can't do it any longer. We charge thee in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of His resurrection and the Holy Ghost is present now. Come out of this audience. 